Awesome, awesome. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get started since we're about six minutes late here. So I uh, want to thank you so much for coming in tonight. Uh, please try to hold off on your questions until the end of the webinar, and I'm sure Matthew will be happy to go through uh, all of them. I'll call them out to you, Matt. Uh, so, guys, this is awesome. Matt, thank you so much for coming on here today. Uh, I know that many of you guys know Matthew. If you don't know Matthew, he's an amazing guy. He's a bright light in the GMB market. So for people that are in the local leads, local marketing, lead gen, uh, call tracking, call marketing, all that good stuff for driving leads for local through GMBs, Matthew is the guy. So when I got a hold of Matthew, I was like, oh, what, do you, what do you got? You know, I've heard a lot of people offering GMBs. I've heard a lot of people offering, you know, different products and they're, they're expensive. They go from anywhere from $200 uh, you know, 100 bucks, 150, 200 dollars. I've seen some people offering them for 300 dollars for GMBs. I'm like, what the heck? So I got a hold of Matthew, looked at what he had, and I was like, you've got to be kidding me! It blew my socks off. Now I've got a red and a black sock on because I don't know where the other <laughs> one went. It just completely out. But uh, all joking aside, Matthew's awesome. He's amazing. He's got a wonderful reputation, and I just want to thank you so much for coming in here today, Matthew man, I'm like, I'm like blushing. This is amazing. <laughs> Michael, though, I really appreciate it. It's, it's a lot of fun. You know, I could talk about this stuff all night. And so here's the thing. I don't know how long you guys like to go on your webinars, but I have some cool stuff to show everybody. I want to show everybody all that. And then let's take some questions as well. And uh, I've got something uh, really fun to share with everybody later. And Let's, uh, let's do this. For everybody that stays on till the end, I've got um, what I call the future proofing method. That is something I've not shared on a webinar before. It's only, I, only something that I shared at a live event that I did back in May. And that is if GMBs ever get wiped out, if GMBs go down, how do you take what you've put in, all this effort and all this energy, how do you take that and completely recycle it and repurpose it in order to actually keep you making money instead of being wiped out. Because I know that's something a lot of people are always concerned about with any sort of method or way of, you know, ranking and, and making money is what happens if Google changes? What happens if I'm flying high and all of a sudden, you know, this thing comes crashing down. And so I've uh, thought about those things many times and have created methods. So if something changes, we've got uh, a whole nother plan that will, uh, will work just as well. So why don't we do this, Michael? Should I just hop right into the notes and examples and start? Yeah, kind of go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead and get started. Uh, guys, also, I'll tell you this. I've got a very sweet bonus on this deal that Matthew's going to talk about. And uh, my bonus is actually recurring. So we'll talk about that, uh, you know, when it comes up. But I've got something very sweet. So we'll talk about that at the end. But go ahead, Matthew. Break in okay. here because you've got some cool. amazing things to share. Yeah, I want to, yeah, that's my goal for tonight is like, you know, some of you are probably doing GMBs maybe already, or maybe you have just a single listing for yourself, or maybe you're doing something for clients. And what I want to show you is my method for domination, as you would call it. I'm going to show you examples where we don't even have a website and we have hundreds of phone calls coming in a month. And that's not something that took years to create. I mean, literally we're creating businesses inside of a month by just flooding them with phone calls. In some cases I'm getting ownership interest in the business. In other cases, I'm just selling the leads and you know, profiting that way. So I want to show you no matter where you're at, if this is something that's totally new to you, or if you're like a really established veteran that you can go, sweet, I can take away something from this webinar. I get it. I apply this and I'm getting even better results, right? So I want this to be worth a lot for the time that we spent together. So let's do this. Let's first just, I'm going to open up some notes here of mine and just kind of walk you guys through some of these things. So first of all, um, basics of GMBs. I'm assuming most of you guys are pretty familiar with Google My Business listings or GMBs as we call them. If you're not, I'm not really going to go in depth on just GMBs and basics of GMBs because there's a lot of places that you can find that information. I want to show you the things that you can't find elsewhere. All right. So the biggest thing that I want to kind of share with you guys is there was a massive shift, okay? It's been probably a couple years now, but there's been a massive shift in how Google treats Google My Business listings, okay? So some of you may have seen this, you've heard of it, or maybe you even experienced it firsthand, but um, there was a shift in the algorithm. Now, I'm, you know, I'm just a real practical guy. So like if it works, I do it, right? Like I don't know every little technical piece. Some of you probably are far more technical uh, than I am. But I think it was uh, the pigeon update that Google rolled out. It's maybe been a couple of years 
ago, but what they essentially did, you guys tell me if you remember this, put this in the chat if you remember this. You remember how like if you had a website or you could see a website that was ranking, let's say like carpet cleaning Los Angeles or Los Angeles carpet cleaning, you would see that business in the maps like no matter where you searched in Los Angeles. Like if you were uh, in the south part of Los Angeles or if you were in the north part of Los Angeles, it would be the same guy or gal that would be ranking no matter what. Like didn't matter where you were at in LA or outside of LA, you'd see the same result there all the time. And Google made a shift to proximity. Do any of you remember when that happened? You guys remember seeing that? Um, let me see if I can see the chat here. Oh, I can, perfect, awesome. Okay, yeah, oh, you guys definitely, you remember when this happened, right? Uh, this was really dramatic. Yeah, Rob's saying September 2016, that sounds about right. Yeah, it's been a, been a couple years or so. Um, but this was dramatic. I mean, at the time, I wasn't doing a lot of GMB stuff like I am now, just primarily ranking clients' websites. They had maybe one or two GMBs, and you know, not like it was today. But what's interesting is I was talking with a member of my group. His name is Aaron, Aaron Lianza. He had a client that had a taxi business. I'm not gonna say the city, but he had a client with a taxi business. Now, obviously, we've got Uber and Lyft and other people kind of invading into that model, but at the time, they were getting a few thousand phone calls per week for this client because a lot of people are just looking for a taxi. And I remember he messaged me and said, Matt, what just happened? Because all of a sudden, like overnight, they lost 90% of their phone calls. And I, I'm kind of like the last one to actually see a lot of these like algorithm updates because I'm just kind of doing my thing. Like it, stuff's working, making money. Like I'm not, you know, a lot of times you're not going to see me like, you know, reading these different sites. I'm just kind of in the trenches, just doing my thing. But he messages me and was kind of freaking out and rightfully so. And I had to look and see what was going on. And I figured out, wow, you know, if you had, cause he had the number one spot for this city for taxis for like, you know, probably a year or more. And they were just, you know, flying high, getting all these calls and they got cut 90%. Can you imagine that losing 90% of your phone calls overnight? I mean, it just really, really was a problem. Um, and so I don't know if he's still working with that, that client today, but I imagine they were, were pretty worked up uh, once 90% of the phone calls were gone, right? So what we discovered kind of out of that shock and that crisis was, wait a second, Google has taken all the leads and all the rankings from just this top guy or this top gal that was ranking number one in the city and has completely distributed this right across all the people in the market and so like now if I'm talking to a new client or even you you guys have probably seen this if you're talking to a client guess what they will a lot of times tell you that the only phone calls that they're getting are the ones that are right in their backyard right they're just right in their backyard they're not phone calls that are coming from uh, all across the metro area and so that's a common thing that people will ask me they'll say Matt can you get me more phone calls across a metro not just in you know, my little neck of the woods. And I'm gonna show you the method here in a little bit as to how you do that, how you get a lot of calls coming in no matter where somebody's located at. But uh, at the time, it was crisis because he lost 90% of these phone calls and we discovered that really what they just did was they just dialed everything into like about a five to 10 mile radius. So if you were in Los Angeles, let's say for taxis, guess what happened? You know, you had, you had businesses that started to benefit from that. People that never did SEO, people that didn't know even what a GMB was, they maybe just had one and started to get phone calls just because Google, you know, if you're in a far part of town, Google's going to show those businesses that are located in that part of the town. And so it's been a big game changer. I still don't see a lot of people talking about this and it is the easiest thing to do, it's the easiest thing to dominate. Most people don't understand it. And when you understand it, you'll understand it by the time you get to the end of this webinar with us tonight. You will figure out exactly how you can just canvas, literally dominate a whole metro area for whatever niche that you want. And I can tell you this, I have looked at every niche that there is. I've been building GMBs in a lot of different niches for people and for myself too. And I can tell you there's not a single niche that I've seen that is already dominated. You would think that every niche would be dominated. Personal, some of the most competitive niches. 
personal injury attorneys, water damage. Have you guys heard that like these niches are very tough, right? I mean, think about it. Water damage. How many people try to rank for water damage because they can get leads, you know, sell these leads for a hundred or 200 or $300, right? There's people, some of, I recognize some of the names that are actually on this webinar that have done GMBs the way I'm talking about. And they have got into the snack pack for water damage without even a website, without even reviews or citations doing it this way that I'm going to show you in just a little bit. And that's, you know, like, <laughs> that's pretty incredible. I mean, you start getting leads for a few hundred dollars a piece, it adds up. Now, that's not to say this doesn't work in other niches as well, because anything less competitive than, say, water damage or personal injury, it's, it's a lot easier, obviously. You can rank in a lot bigger cities faster, okay? So, um, uh, Michael, do you want to kind of keep track of some of the um, questions that are coming in? Because I know yeah. you guys are excited. Um, and got some questions about competitive niches and ranking in different areas. Yep. Um, people ask about neighborhood GMBs. Not quite what we're going to cover, but close. Um, and so uh, just, you know, hang on. I will get to all of those here tonight. So what I want to do first is just to show you guys kind of the potential of what's possible. All right. Now I'll tell you how many GMBs are behind these list, behind these numbers. So that way you can see that, you know, I'm not just going to promise you that you're going to get 500 phone calls, you know, this month. You can get 500 phone calls this month, but you're not going to do that with one or two GMBs. You're, you would need a lot more to do that. So I want to actually show you two real projects of mine and exactly what they're bringing in call wise. And I'll tell you what my progression was to get them there. Okay. So let's jump over to that right now and I'll explain how many GMBs there are how we set them up, where they're located, everything. I'll even tell you the markets that these are in, okay? So let's do this. Uh, let's jump over and Michael, if I share my screen, will you let me know if you can see it here? Oh yeah, yep, I see it. Uh, okay. Yep, we got it, we got it live. Um, okay, so you're awesome, good to go. awesome. So let's just jump over to a call tracker here, the Jensen call tracker. So if you guys can see this date range right here, this is for the last 30 days. January 15th to February 15th, 350 calls. And you can see that the call volume here, it shows that it's up 54%. I think, I don't know this call tracker that well, um, but I think that means it's up from the previous 30 days that much. So what you're looking at here is actually an HVAC campaign that we did, okay? Now there's a lot of GMBs that were created for this. We did about 75 in December. Okay. So this is not even two months old. All right. Now there's not a website attached to this. Some of the listings do have reviews. There's no citations done yet. So when you look if, and here's what I'm going to do a bit later on, I'm going to tell people how they can get uh, an actual walkthrough through these sites. So, I mean, obviously, right, this webinar, a lot of people are on here and you guys, those of you that know me know I'm really giving. I like to share everything. Um, but this is an actual like client project. So I'm not going to show the domain here, but um, I will explain how uh, you guys can get a walkthrough of that actual site. I will show you the business name, the actual GMBs. I'll walk you through everything, but just being this is public, um, I'm not going to put the client name out there. Anybody that trains with me, obviously I'll show you my exact clients uh, and exactly what I'm doing. I give out the domains, everything. Okay. Um, which people are like, think I'm crazy for that. But, um, you know, I believe that whatever I put out comes back. And so as I help you, um, you know, good comes back to me and, uh, and it's served me well so far. So, uh, 350 calls, <laughs> you know, just this month. And there's not even a website attached. I'm just finishing the site right now. I expect when we add the site to this, the calls will double, right? Because right now we're not getting any clicks over to a website. So if anyone's really like, analyzing or shopping, they're probably not going to call us because there's no website there. And a lot of these listings don't even have reviews. A few do, but it's probably half the listings don't even have reviews. So 350 phone calls for an HVAC business. Now I'm going to explain a little bit how I actually name these listings because that is a secret, the naming and the location for getting them to rank. So I just want to show you one other project that's a little more established. All right. And that's this one here. Uh, this one here is an insulation website. You can see that um, this is absolutely crushing it as well. Now you're going to see that the total calls the last 30 days was 900. Now we could go through and I'm sure there's some spam calls in here as well. There's got to be like, you know, Yelp and An Angie's List and Home Advisor and some of those folks calling, but 
it's not half the phone calls. Even if it were, 450 phone calls would be pretty impressive. Would you agree? Uh, for uh, a lead generation installation website. Both of these websites are located in the same kind of metro area. It's about a two to three county area. Most of the business comes from one county. Okay, but we have a couple other counties that have a few GMBs in them. Most of it is in one. So that first HVAC example I showed you, 75 GMBs. I've added a few since, so probably up to about 100. This insulation uh, one has had about 50 GMBs. And in the last month, I've added a lot. I have actually added about 100 more GMBs. So you can see in the last month what's happened to the phone calls. I added a ton more GMBs, and the phone calls have you know, gone from you know, basically 500 to 900. Well, that, that's amazing. Can I interject real quick here? Yeah, please, please. Uh, I got a question. Someone actually popped it up. Good question. Uh, why does it say zero on the total minutes? What does that mean? Um, I don't know Jensen well enough. Does it say that on both? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure why it says total minutes. You can see here that it says answered, like shows yeah, the 708, answer. yeah. 708 of the calls, which, you know, I'm on them. I'm like, guys, you just missed 192 calls. Like, yeah. you know, um, so, you know, that's, you know, that's just kind of the working with clients. You're going to see that, you know, they didn't answer, you know, they answered 293. Um, I tell you what, I'll see if I can find some stats on, on minutes. I was actually in the Twilio account beforehand, but because it's all sub accounts, it doesn't show everything all nice together. Um, and it would have showed all the phone numbers there too. So yeah, I mean, that, that's absolutely massive guys that are watching this and, and ladies, ladies and gents, when I say guys, I'm saying everybody, uh, you guys. Yeah. So yeah, I, I always get, uh, always got in trouble in the family cause I always referred to everybody male and female as dude. It never felt <laughs> so, uh, I even called my mom dude once, but that was only one time I learned my lesson. <laughs> it's one time, never again. <laughs> never again, never again. But uh, yeah, so on this, I mean, this is amazing. 900 calls in one month, 350 calls in one month. It's kind of blown my mind too, really. Like I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of giddy with this whole thing because this, this is all, you know, transpired kind of over the last year. And like, as we have perfected it more and, and dialed it in more, it's like, it's really cool because I'm just able to just, turn phone calls on for anybody that wants phone calls, which is, um, yeah, that's, that's absolutely cool. crazy. Now I got, I got a question yeah. here. Someone just popped sure. in. Actually, I got two questions. If you'll okay. Yeah, go ahead. Just get some water. All right. Uh, how big of a radius would you need for a hundred GMBs? So great question. So what I look at is not so much the radius of like what you would need. I look at more, you want to cover all the major search terms and you want to cover all the places that your market is located in, which is kind of brings me into a, a point I was going to cover in a little bit. So let's just cover that right now. And that is you want to locate, assuming you're going to do this for like service businesses, which is primarily what I do, roofing, HVAC, insulation. Um, but it can be done for anything. I mean, I have people in my group and that have been using this method that I'm showing you to cover like Every, every week, it's like somebody gives me a niche. It's like, hey, you know, are you in like the cash for cars niche? <laughs> Never even <laughs> thought about that, you know? <laughs> are you in the CBD niche? Are you in the this and the that? And, you know, it's like I've not, you know, I've not seen it. Uh, actually, I take it back. I've seen, and I'll explain this. I've seen one, um, one market that it hasn't worked in. And I'll show you guys that in a little bit. And we'll, we'll talk about why it hasn't worked. Um, but that's like one of about a hundred, the rest have all worked really, really well. So the key here though, is locating these GMBs in suburbs around a, a good sized city. That's really the key. You want to be having GMBs where there is population. Cause let's, let's go back for a second. Let's go back to this whole idea that, you know, um, Google kind of came out with, with their algorithm, which Google thought it was a great idea to say, you know what? We're going to cut the reach of GMBs way, way, way back. You're, you can't just have a single GMB anymore and rank it for all of Los Angeles. Not fair. Think about this. Does it make more sense for Google financially to let one person with one GMB own the entire metro area with one listing? Or does it make more sense that they distribute it and let everybody have a little tiny piece of the puzzle little tiny piece of the pie and be unhappy with that little piece of the pie because now what are they going to have to do? They're going to have to use AdWords. 
They're going to have to buy ads if they want to be seen in more places than just their little neck of the woods. And so this was huge for Google. This adjustment ramped their ad revenue way up because all those people that were, I mean, I've, I've seen this. I literally had clients coming to me saying, well, Matt, do you think we need to start doing some ads? You know, a couple years back, they like, you know, saw their reach drop too, which, you know, didn't make me look very good because they just had their one GMB and, you know, the reach was cut. So it's like, what do I do? You know, the clients on me going, Hey Matt, we need more business. And so, you know, they were considering doing AdWords. In some cases they did AdWords because they wanted lead flow right away. That's what they had to do. Their one GMB just wasn't cutting it anymore. So, um, the, the way you want to locate these is all around a Metro where people are located. So let me give you guys a, a little, a little really nice, uh, juicy tidbit and you want to search uh, best places to live in an area. So whatever metro area you're looking at putting GMBs in, you want to search uh, in Google best places to live and you're going to find this website which is uh, niche or niche.com, however you pronounce it. Uh, and this is a great little website. And what you want to do is you want to go through and just look here at some of the areas that they're giving you that are great places to live. Now you may not want to do a GMB in every single one of these areas. That would probably be, um, you know, a little much unless you want to be aggressive. I do my stuff aggressive, so I'll show you how I map. Yeah, out. I mean, I was just getting ready to say that that that's actually not a bad idea because what people need to understand, Matt, and I think this is what you're getting at here. You're definitely getting at this is that the more areas it's like fishing, the more yeah. hooks and lures you have in the pond, the more bites you're going to get. If you have one yeah. uh, pole that you're putting all of your weight on all of your, you know, hopes and exactly. dreams of getting that big Marlin, uh, you're going to have less chance of getting that Marlin. But if you have more and more lines out there, like I had a question by mm -hmm. Scott Walker and he said, this looks really exciting. I'm pounding, one GMB for 300,000 population. Uh, so he's thinking, you know, now I need to go out and get more. So if there's a 300,000 population, yeah. just on an estimation, how many GMBs for a big city like that would you? Well, why don't we do, yeah, why don't we do this, Michael? Why doesn't somebody throw out an area? And then what I'll do is we'll actually look it up and I'll show everybody where I would locate the GMBs there. So, yeah, so we got, we got uh, Michael Howard who jumped in the webinar first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, guys, DC, District of Columbia. Okay, perfect, perfect. Go for uh, DC here. Okay, that's awesome. So let's do this. I'm just gonna modify my search a little bit and we're gonna change this from Orlando, which is a market I was just doing some stuff in. Um, so let's just do this in Washington, DC. And you're probably gonna see the same website come up, right? Cause this niche.com is like everywhere. Yeah, so here's niche.com. So here you go. I like to look at this at first cause this will show you um, basically what I would call suburbs, right? And DC, there's a lot of population there. So you're going to find that there's a lot of areas. Some of these are going to have pretty big population, which is fine. Uh, like you said, more lines that you have in, the more fish you're going to catch. So uh, let's do this as well. I'm going to pull up one more thing. And we're going to go Washington, DC, zip code map. All right. So let's do this. And I've not been on this website, but let's just see this. Um, that's not really a zip code map. Okay, this is here, it looks like. This should be fine. Yeah, this will work. It may not get to the other areas of DC, around DC, like Arlington and whatnot. Um, oh, come on, Quora. We don't want you. You got to sign in or something for that. Uh, let me just find one here that looks good. Uh, well, we can start with like this right here, but you guys can do this for your own particular market, right? It's just a rough example, but that's fine. So I like to combine these two things together because for most businesses, and there's a few exceptions, but for most businesses, you want to be where the people are living, right? Unless you have like a B2B kind of thing where you're thinking, okay, most of my clients are going to be coming from like a downtown area or like a business district. If that's the case, you'd want to be having your GMB in downtown or in the business district. I mean, how many of you remember when everybody used to say, put your GMB in the city centroid, right? And most people just assumed that city centroid was like downtown, right? It's where like the center of city is. That used to work, right? But that is completely bye-bye now because 
it's all about where people are searching from. So you want to be exactly where the people are at. So if we're talking a business, let's say like, um, uh, give a good example, maybe like fencing. Okay. Uh, if you're a fence contractor and you want to sell some really nice fencing, are you going to sell it in the more affluent areas or the lower end areas? Right? Probably the more affluent areas. So part of this is you need to just think a little bit about your niche and think, where do you want to locate these for highest probability of success? I mean, you can put them everywhere and that'll work. You'll still get phone calls. But if you're going to be selling these to a business or getting paid for a lead or for a sale, they're going to be really happy clients if you're giving them the ideal job. So I like to just match that up with the niche. If it's a home service niche, I target the family areas and I target the higher end areas. If it's something that just appeals to everybody and it really doesn't matter in terms of if it's high end or larger homes or anything like that, then you can just put them everywhere and cover the whole, you know, just like you wouldn't exclude any areas. So I love this website, best places to live here on niche.com. And I would go put them in all of these, Arlington, North Bethesda, excuse my pronunciation because I've never been to these places, uh, Garrett Park, North Potomac. Um, so oh, you, you, totally, you totally got it. You got I it. I got it. Okay. Vienna, Kensington, um, Rockville. You know, I've made GMBs in these places uh, for people, but I've never been uh, to these places. But in general, I would cover, um, I would cover all these. A few of these that are really tiny that maybe only have like, 4,000 population or something like that. You could like this one, 3,000 people. Um, yeah, if the niche really counts, uh, then, then I would do it. Um, otherwise, you know, if it's really close to another location, uh, another one of these cities, you could, uh, you could probably lump it in with another one. But remember, you're only going to show up for about five, maybe 10 miles if you're lucky. So you really need to cover the whole area to see you know, that domination effect. So a little trick as well that I use is I'll look at the zip code maps and um, you'll see a lot of times, let me just show you Orlando as an example because I did this the other day for a client um, and it was, it was kind of nice because it overlaid, um, it overlaid like downtown, but it also overlaid like the other areas as well. So let me just see, I think maybe this will show it. Oh, this is so tiny. I don't know if it's really going to show it. No, it doesn't look like it's going to show it well. Uh, let me just kind of walk you through uh, kind of how you would do this. So you'd look at a map. You could take a little more time when you're doing this yourself, locating your GMBs. But you want to line up basically the map of the city with an overlay of the zip codes. All right. And when you do this, you're going to see that there's a few zip codes that are going to be in like the downtown area. And then you're going to have more zip codes that start that still count as far as like the city, but they're more on the outskirts. And then you start your suburbs where if you actually were to Google that address, it would no longer show Orlando. It would show like Altamont Springs or Winter Park or Windermere or something like that, okay? So that's the key. If Google is also saying that this is a different area, like if they look at an address, and it's easy to just look at an address and see where it's at. But if you look at an address and it says Arlington instead of DC, you absolutely need a GMB there because Google is not going to take your DC one and show it in Arlington, right? Unless your like niche is like underwater basket weaving or something that's so remote that there's nobody else there um, to pick from. You remember, they want to distribute it across everybody because they want to just give you a little taste of business and then not enough, you need to buy ads. That's what they want you to do, okay? So, um, that being said, I don't want to buy ads from Google. Okay. <laughs> if you guys buy ads from Google, that's fantastic. Bless you. But, um, I do not want to buy ads from Google, right? I would much rather own these GMB listings and have business coming in from across this whole Metro area. So, um, Michael, does that help in terms of how to locate them? Every market's a little bit different, but the best thing to do is look at the best, best places to live. Okay. If it doesn't matter where they live, you can just look at it purely by population. And if you have a big city, right, where the actual city limits are quite large, then what you can do is you can do what I call a northeast southwest orientation, meaning you would pick uh, and locate, let's say, a GMB in the north part of Orlando. You'd locate one in the east part, the south, and the west. 
And that way you would actually have a few within Orlando city limits. And then you would cover all of the suburbs as well. In some yeah, cases, I don't do four right in the actual city if I know that it's a more of a higher end service or there's not a lot of homes right in downtown or right within city limits, right? So it depends on your, your niche. If it's just people that you're after, um, then you just want population. So you just you want to be everywhere. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely genius. That's genius. That's a great way of doing it. Uh, I, I think a lot of people that have gotten in the GMBs, uh, they've been told by other marketers, they've been told by other people that, hey, you know what, just buy one GMB from me for $5,000. No, back in the day probably, but you know, right. spend bucks, this, yeah. this amount of money, two or $300, and uh, this will rank all over the place. And they don't realize that uh, now, or now they're realizing, because I'm seeing in chat, people are saying, oh, snap, I bought one GMB. Uh, for two or three hundred dollars, and now um, I'm thinking, wow, uh, look right. what I can do! I'm not getting the calls that I want. I get the calls, yeah. Or you're having trouble ranking it because you're trying to rank it for such a big location. Whereas if you have ten or fifteen or twenty or thirty or fifty, right. um, then they could be all over the place. So Michael uh, Howard responded and said, "Thank you. That was a really great explanation." And okay. he totally awesome. gets, you know, he understands it. Now there is a question I'm seeing come up a lot, and I don't think that Matthew is going to reveal this to you guys. Um, but, uh, I will put it out there for you, Matthew. <laughs> Throw it out there. We'll see. Uh, everybody's asking, how are you verifying these, uh, without addresses? <laughs> without an address. Of Very careful. Everybody <laughs> asks that. <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's that's quite, it's quite, it's quite a process. It's quite a process. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, I but maybe think of one thing, um, when you brought up the question, um, about, you know, or I guess kind of brought up the point about just having a GMB and trying to rank it for, um, for a major city. And this is something that I feel a lot of people are misguided on. So I want to kind of give you a sort of an inside scoop as to how I look at these, because I think once you understand it this way, um, you're going to have an edge and it's, it's going to make a lot of sense for you. So think about this. How do most people do their, their research in terms of uh, where to, um, you know, what to use for keywords and locations and all that. What, what do people use? A, a tool, right? Most of us use a tool. There's nothing wrong with tools. If you have a tool that you love, that's great. Keep using it. But I'm going to share with you a little different way of using any keyword research tools that you might be using that will explode your GMB results. Because what do most people do? They say, you know what? I want to rank for chiropractor. I want to rank this client or this lead gen site for chiropractor in uh, Phoenix, right? So what do they do? They go and look at the search volume for Phoenix Chiropractor. They get one GMB and they try to rank the site for Phoenix Chiropractor. And it takes a while, right? Because you can't move too fast. You don't want to sandbox the sites. You're taking your time. And what happens is it, it really gets kind of demotivating. <laughs> this is how I used to do things. It would be like two or three months in and it's like, oh man, you know, the client's like on me, I'm not getting the phone calls. And you start getting hard on yourself because you thought you'd be able to generate results sooner and you haven't. So you start beating yourself up. And it's really, you know, it's, it's kind of frustrating. It's kind of unfortunate. And what I found is that there's kind of a flaw in how we've like been taught to look at these keyword tools since proximity has become important. And that is we're just looking at a search term thinking that that's where the volume is at. And really with this proximity algorithm, the volume is not there or the total volume of everybody looking for this business or this, this, this you know, product or whatever it is you're wanting to rank is not just locked up in that keyword phrase. There may be people that are searching chiropractors, right? Or chiropractic near me or chiropractors open now or just chiropractor. And what are they doing? They're looking in the map results and Google is showing them the chiropractors that are closest to them. So ranking your website for chiropractor Phoenix or Phoenix chiropractor is not going to get you the phone calls. I actually heard from somebody yesterday that said this. They said, Matt, you know, I've like, I was kind of on to what you're talking about here with my GMBs. I started to, to realize that I needed more of them because I ranked a website number one for like a couple hundred searches a month. And I realized I like wasn't getting any phone calls. 
I thought once I got number one, I'd get all these calls and I didn't. So they realize that the calls are really coming from GMBs right now. And if you have a website that's existing, whether it's ranked top or not, when you add GMBs to it, it's like magic. Um, without, you know, taking three hours to explain every little mechanic of this to you, I think you, most of you realize that real traffic coming into a website is really important, right? It definitely is something that Google's looking at. So imagine if you not, you, you know, just have one GMB. Imagine if you had five, 10, 20, 100 GMBs all bringing real traffic to your website. That right there can get you ranked, okay? But remember, my goal to start is not to rank the website. The key with fast results on this is GMBs first. You want to go ahead and get your GMBs up first because that can start bringing in phone calls. Um, Michael, is Venu on with us? I don't know if he's no, on with I us. I don't believe that. Uh, let me see if Venu is here. Uh, if he's not, maybe you can just explain what he shared with you a couple days ago because he used this strategy and got GMBs and he actually doesn't even have a website linked yet. Um, because he doesn't even have the logins. Um, they just were finished being created, but he generated some pretty amazing results uh, following this model. Again, not taking a website first and then you know trying to build that up and take time, but instead getting the GMBs first and seeing where the phone calls come in and then focusing efforts on the areas that are already working. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'll just pop in here real quick on this. So I was doing a uh, coaching call with Venu and Venu told me that, uh, hey, by the way, um, I ordered, you know, these GMBs from Matthew. Uh, I've not actually gotten access to them yet. This is what he told me. I hadn't, he hadn't yep. gotten access to them. They he just got even, access this morning to them. Yeah, they weren't even delivered to him. But they no, there was a couple already, we were still finishing. They weren't even all done, I think, when he uh, messaged you. Exactly. Yeah, they weren't even done. Up. He didn't have any control. He wasn't able to go in and do anything to them because right. Matthew and his team were creating them. And uh, he was like, you won't believe it. He was like, I got a super hot lead today, came right in. Uh, the guy wants to hire me for business. And uh, he told me the guy uh, has a business that he brings in $10 million a year. So it was a super hot lead for what Venu has, for what he offers. He has really high-end uh, consulting that he does and some other really great business uh, businesses they offer services, I should say. And he couldn't believe it. He was like, I don't even have access to this. The guy called me up. Yeah. He wants to hire me today. He was like, and I've already uh, generated more income off of this, you know, this GMB than, uh, than what, you know, he invested in on GMBs. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. He couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait a second. You didn't even get access to this yet. And you're already getting phone calls from a businessman that is uh, bringing in $10 million a year. That's a perfect that's a perfect type of lead, guys. That's what we want. Uh, yeah. You we know what, Michael, was kind of funny is, you know, Venu, he was pretty, um, he was kind of concerned before he ordered that, um, that it would work for the niche, right? Because he's, yeah. he's in a pretty specialized niche. Yes. And so he said to me, he's like, I'm, you know, I don't, do you think this will work? He's like, I don't. Because it was a niche that I'd never done GMBs for before. Yeah. So I said, I don't know. I said, you know, let, let's try it. Let's just try it and see. And uh, he said, cool, let's, let's just try it and give it a go. And then, um, you know, well, there you, you just heard the and results. And there you go. I mean, that was, that was a real one for me. And I was like, what yeah. the heck? Yeah, that's already yeah. working. It's I mean, that's cool. genius. I mean, in common niches, you know, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a gimme. Um, but, um, but yeah, the key is, you know, the more you niche down with this, actually, the better it works. So I remember earlier I told you there was one example that this was like one of the very largest cities in the country, okay, for pest control. And the listings, um, and now this guy, he's ordered for about 10 different niches. So he said nine, nine of the 10 are making him like 10 times what he's spending on the GMVs, but this particular one didn't produce. And I want to explain this because I think it'll help you when you're locating and, and figuring out your GMVs, what is going to give you the highest um, probability of success. And what he did was he did pest control, but he did it like right in this metro, like, you know, one of the biggest cities of the country and just targeted it right, like right there. And, you know, pest control is a competitive niche. So what he did was said, you know what, Matt, why don't we try animal removal instead? I said, wow, that's kind of interesting. Crushed it. <laughs> Absolutely crushed it. So he's still sending 
you know, the, the business to the same partner that he lined up, but it was just a little more niche down. And cause it was such a large city that worked, right? So if you're doing pass control and it's a very, very big city, think how you can niche it down a little more because by niching it down, he hit the snack pack for every one of the areas within the first week without doing anything else. I know that sounds like a lot of hype, but it's, it's naming it the right way. And I'm going to show you guys how to name these in a second because naming it is about 75, 80% of getting into the snack pack right away. Okay. Cause he didn't do citations. He didn't even, he doesn't even have any reviews going to them. You want to get reviews, but to start, you know, you, you're not going to have any reviews on them. It's going to take a little time to put them on. So what he did was animal removal. And then now we're talking, okay, let's do it for bed bugs. Let's do it for termites, right? So it's a hot area. So both of those should work pretty well. So if it's a super competitive niche, think about how you can niche it down a little bit. And, you know, if you have questions on this, um, you know, I'm going to make myself available to you guys to make sure that you're successful with this. I've seen a lot of niches, so I can tell you um, what I've seen work. Um, if it's a specific metro you're looking at, I've probably already worked in that metro, so I can give you some advice as to what areas. Um, yeah, that's, that's genius. Here, here's a question yeah. for you, and this is actually for me. Um, sure. It, I'm sure you've had people order 100 uh, plus GMBs. For those the record, the record so far is a thousand. So okay, okay, I mean, let's just beats Tad, but yeah, let's just take that crazy person. I love that person already. <laughs> I don't know who they are, but uh, I'm in love. you know, he he started with like a hundred. He started with a hundred, yeah. and then you know was like, oh, you know, saw the hundred work, and then so he. Oh, just, that's <laughs> genius. That's great. Okay, let's say that you know he has a thousand GMBs. Uh, do you know how many phone calls he's getting on average? Just an estimation. I don't know. You know, this is a, this is a legal niche. So okay. I don't know. Um, you know, I can message him. Um, do you give me a second? Let me just um, keep going, Michael, but let me just yeah. shoot him a message. Yeah, that's, that, I, I'm just curious because, uh, yeah. you know, you were showing these GMBs, uh, people that set up, you know, your own right there and you get 900 calls per month. I was thinking if you have a thousand GMBs out there, especially in the legal niche, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah, do people good. have any idea? how expensive uh, those leads are. Those leads are super expensive for a legal niche. Well, I think so. that's, and I think that's probably why he's, yeah, is, is getting so many too, is because, you know, when you, when you look at it and when you guys see the special offer that we do later, if it's, you know, if it's something that you're, you're jumping in on, you're going to see that it, it really, uh, I've, I've set this up in a way to scale. Okay. So trying to just buy like a GNB or two, you're not going to get enough momentum, right? So I've set it up in a way where you can scale. And you'll see another um, on the page that Michael will show you later. There is a gentleman named Kyle, spelled with a C, C-Y-L-E. And Kyle also um, has got some stuff in the legal niche. This is not the, not the one that I was telling you about, but somebody else that's in that niche in a different area. And you will see a couple screenshots that he has put um, you'll see a few screenshots from people that are using this model on that page from their call logs. And what Kyle has done is really interesting. He, like Venu, had seen calls before there was even a website attached to it. And this is in um, some very, very specialized legal areas where, um, you know, the, the value of, of some of these, uh, these leads is hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not like a hundred dollar lead. So well, to get well, one lead like that in a single year is like, they'll invest, you know, they'll invest marketing all year long to get one of those. And yeah. Yeah. Got, I mean, I was just, I got was just, one of those in the first week. I think they've got two or three cents, but he's, he's had them up for like, you know, a month and a half, two months. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, if you even go after something like, uh, I know in the paper call uh, niche, uh, you know, mesothelioma, Oh, yeah. I remember doing PPL and, uh, you mm -hmm. know, it was $4,500 for a three minute phone call is what you got paid on that. So uh, right. if you imagine if you set up a mesothelioma type of thing, now here's a question for you in chat. I've got a couple here. Uh, Scott Rogers asked, uh, would this work for a Why physical you... product like a uh, creative uh, gift idea? Should he target a GMB near a Costco total wine store? Uh, his, his product okay. is wine gift boxes. So, He's wondering if you're setting up for his own product, which he does, right. these amazing boxes. Okay, you saw all those yeah. wine bottles up on top of my uh, my shelf there. I actually ordered a box out of uh, Scott. 
and I never sent him the information over. It's been months that I haven't even, uh, I paid him for it. I haven't got the beautiful box yet, but uh, he, he does these amazing boxes. So for so him, cool. if he's doing wine gift boxes, yeah. what would you recommend for him? Yeah, in ter- so this is what I would recommend. Every website you really want to have a GMB for because it will bring you traffic, right? And the traffic is helpful. But in terms of... Um, in terms of dominating it this way, um, I've not done something with a, a physical product like that. It's not to say that it couldn't work, but I just, I don't want to recommend something to you that I, that I haven't personally done that I could, you know, I mean, we could, we could hypothesize about it, but my gut tells me it's not going to work as well as, uh, as it will with, you know, the local business examples because of the intent, right? Like we could get it to rank, like we could get it in front of people, but I'm just not sure that the intent is going to be quite the same as where, you know, this person's looking for an attorney or they're looking for a carpet cleaner or they're looking for a chiropractor or whatever it might be. And they're, you know, they're looking for that on Google because they need that right now. And they're calling for that specifically. So, yeah, yeah, that makes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now I had an earlier question come in on, uh, locations and I told the people that, uh, you know, your different locations in here, they're asking, do you do UK? Do you do Australia? Right now, it's just the US and Canada. Um, We can do UK and Australia as well. Um, But the volume for us is just not there yet. We're, you know, kind of getting the team dialed in to be able to do those a bit faster. And so for what I would suggest is if you need those areas, then still, you know, still reach out through this. And as soon as we're available to do those, then we'll do those for you too. I just, you know, right now our turnaround takes about a week. Okay. So that's pretty quick. And so I, you know, I, I'd like to keep that time frame up. So I don't want to tell you that, Hey, you know, I can get you this other country and have it take a month or something. So we will be able to do that. But right now it's just us and Canada. So if they, if they had a big order that they wanted to put through, uh, you know, a decent size order of like 30 GMBs or more, uh, sure. would that speed up your process a little bit bigger, better if you had that type of Um, I will tell you this, the one thing that speeds up our process is actually when we kind of work in concentrated areas. All right. So if you're going to take a Metro and completely dominate it, that is going to be the fastest way to do it. If you're doing a lot of different metros, we can accommodate that as well. But I see people having the best results when they dominate a Metro. So while you can jump around a little bit, if you want, most people do the best with a Metro. Um, in, in terms of order sizes of, you know, 30 or 50 or 100, um, we can still turn those around uh, just as fast. If it's an international one, um, yeah, we should be able to accommodate, but it will likely take us more than a week. So just know that going in, like we can do it for you, but it's just not going to be quite as quick. So if you're okay with that right now, then we can do that. Um, otherwise, it's going to take a little more time. Yeah, so I've, I've got another question here. Sure. Um, and uh, I think you could. And I want to make sure too. let me just interrupt you for one sec, Michael. I want to make sure to just remind me that we need to go over the naming strategy. Okay. Yeah. Um, as well. Cause I, I want to make sure I don't forget that. Cause that is the key for making sure these rank in the snack pack right away. If you don't name them right, you'll get stuck down to like position 10 and it doesn't work. So definitely, definitely. Okay. So here's, here's the deal. This is a question I'm seeing it pop up in the Q and a and on okay. the chat as well. Uh, so a lot of people have been asking, Hey, what, <laughs> We're talking about the offer, but what is a doggone offer? So I dropped the okay. link in there for a couple of the hungry, hungry people that are really hungry for sure. this. But they want to they get on it. Yeah, they want to get in on this already. Yeah. But uh, here's the other big question is, you know, is this a, uh, they're wanting to know, are you selling GMBs or a course? Because uh, some of these people are saying, well, we'd like to learn how to do this ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, what's the difference between doing it themselves or doing it uh, what you're offering? Sure. I I will tell you this. The way that we're making this work is with a very large team of virtual assistants, some software, some grunt work. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So that's why, like, even if I could teach you how to do this, the problem would be is you would say, well, Matt, how are you able, how are you doing, you know, 30 or 50 in a week for me for a Metro um, I've been slogging at this thing all day and I, and you know, like by the time I got this all dialed in, I got three, you know, I got one. <laughs> so it's not so much that you maybe couldn't do this yourself. It's just that we, because of how many we're doing and because we've been doing it for quite a while, 
we have some economies of scale. Um, and I've got a lot of money invested into the, into the technology in order to make it happen. So it's just really not that easy or cost effective for one person to do. I mean, I can tell you that one of the tools alone that we use is $18,000. So I, mean, I could show you how to do it, but like you wouldn't be able to do it the way that I'm doing it. And to me, that wouldn't be fair. It's like, oh, well, Matt does it this way, but you know, well, sorry, you guys can't really do it because who wants to spend $18,000 on the software that Matt's using in order to do that? So it's not that you couldn't do it. It's just more the fact that you're going to need a whole ton of stuff and then you're going to need to employ like 10 people. And so it's just not, you know, it, it's more of a scaling factor and the fact that you're going to have to shell out a lot of money uh, to get everything that you need to do or to, to get in order to like even just make a couple of these. So for most people, when you see what we're doing, we're, we're helping you to scale this fast. You're not having, I think you'll like it. You're not having to spend hundreds of dollars up front for a GMB and, and, and just limit yourself to a GMB. We're going to show you how you can get a lot of GMBs working for you. My goal for you would be to get, you know, a lot of these going, right? Whether that's 10 or 20 or hundred, whatever works for you, but get a lot of these going. So that way the leads that you're selling from them right away will more than cover what you're paying for the GMBs. So Michael, do you want to, do you want to drop the link or what are you going to explain? Yeah, I've dropped the link in a couple of times and uh, okay. what I think would be good. I know that we need to go over the naming here, Yeah, but uh, I think it'd be great is to, uh, here, here's the link actually for me. Uh, if you want to pull this up on your screen. Okay, so let me, sure. Let me send this to you on Facebook here. And uh, if you could just I tell you, why don't you shoot in. it, why don't you shoot it through the chat? Because Otherwise, we open Facebook. I get like 200 Facebook messages a day. And uh, okay, here it is on the uh, chat again. Like, Matt's on, Matt's on. It's time to message him. And yeah. I want to make sure that I focus with you guys here. Yes, yeah, so you just copy that link if you want and uh, pop that in up there. All right. So, and then if you could just kind of cover it quickly on, uh, you know, what, what, what type of service you're offering. Because people are used to, like I said, uh, buying GMBs for three hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, okay, so let me get the link here, um, and then I'll like just kind of walk everybody through real quick how this works um, so nicely. So, what I discovered was if you just have a GMB or two, you don't get enough momentum. So we kind of talked about that earlier, but you just you're not going to generate enough calls in order to number one impress the partner, the lead partner that you're selling to, or the client that you're working with. But number two, it's hard to keep going with something, right, for a lot of people unless they're seeing some kind of result. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm not going to slog at something for months and months and months if I've not even seen a glimmer of result or gotten a little payback, right, or got, made some money off of it in order to want to continue with it. So I'm in the position from my agency and my lead gen sites and, and my investments to be able to shell out the money to create these for you and let you pay me back for them over time after you've already ranked them and are making money, which nobody else will do this. All right. I've had other people that sell GMBs for a couple hundred bucks message me and they think I'm crazy because they're like, well, 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 what if this, what if this? I'm like, I'm not worried about that. I have an abundance mindset. Okay. And so I believe, this is what I believe. I believe if you see results with this, okay, number one, you're going to want to continue paying. Number two, you'll probably want to do more with Michael and I, right? Because you're going to say, look, this is working so well. What else do you have? How do I take this further, right? And there's other cool things that you can take this further with. So the way I look at this is I want to help each of you get that success, whether it's a first success or whether you're already established and cranking and you just want to double your phone calls. That's fine with me too. So this is how it works. I'm going to have you select 10, at least 10 is the minimum. Okay. We're, we can't just do this onesie twosie because it's, it's a management nightmare. So the key is we have to do at least 10. If you don't do 10, you're not going to see the phone calls and it's not going to be exciting for you. So you have to do at least 10, um, but they can be in one Metro. You can split it in a couple metros if you want. But like we said before, imagine if you had 10, 20, 50 or, or more of these working for you. And so this is my offer for you. You tell us the niche that you want. You're going to pick the business name, which we'll go over how to create that in a second. You're going to set up a phone number, which we can talk a little bit about how you do call tracking, but 
any phone number call tracking system will work fine, but you need a phone number for the listing because you're going to have to forward it to somebody, right? So you need to get a phone number for the listing. So business name, phone number, and area will help you find the addresses and you need obviously the category that it's in. Once you give this to us, we will go create those listings for you, whether it's 10 or 20 or 50, whatever it is, we're going to create the listings for you. And then after the listings are live, we're going to show you that they're live. You'll be able to see them. You will then just pay back $8 per month per GMB for 10 months. Okay. So I'm going to finance you over 10 months for them. After the 10 months, you own the GMBs hundred percent. Okay. So let me explain the mechanics of how this works. We use a new Gmail account for every single GMB that we make. Okay. We have those Gmail accounts immediately. Once we get these live and your payment is set up, we go ahead and we assign you access manager access to all the GMBs. So you have full dashboard access. You can go in right away and add photos. If you want, you can add services, you can optimize them. You can do everything. We'll talk about, and, and even hopefully if we've got some time still, Michael, how late can we go here? Um, Cause I can show people what I do to optimize them right away as well. If we have a little time. Yeah, I, I think we've got plenty of time here. Um, okay. okay, cool. You know, the guys are going crazy. Uh, Laundry just posted, uh, is today December 25th? This must be Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had so many messages from people that just are so grateful because they felt like they were shut out of, of, of getting GMBs and doing lead gen because for them it was like, if I even get a few GMBs at a hundred or a couple hundred dollars a pop, like it's just really hard for them to scale because then they're thinking you need a website and all this other stuff. And what... What I've done with this program is just, I've leveled the playing field. I mean, you guys can compete with some of the biggest people in lead generation because, I mean, $8 per month to have a GMB. I mean, can you get a phone call off of that GMB <laughs> that's worth more than eight bucks? Let's just even say that you only got one phone call, right? One phone call for like in, for the entire 10 months on that GMB, it would pay for itself. Right. So, yeah. so, and then after those 10 months, you don't owe me anything after that. It's entirely yours. So what we do then is at the end of the 10 months, then I just give you the Gmail account. So at that point it's totally yours. I mean, like you can change the log and do whatever you want. Um, and people ask me, they say, well, Matt, like, aren't you concerned about somebody like, you know, getting these suspended or what if they over optimize it or something? Well, Number one, I'm going to give you exactly what I do, my guidelines for optimizing these so you have the best possible way working for you out of the gate. Now, that being said, if you, you know, decide not to listen to me and you decide to uh, do something wacky and your GMB goes down, well, I'm a pretty nice guy. My policy is this. If your GMB goes down or, or all your GMBs go down, what happens then, right? Oh my gosh, I lost the GMB. Then as long as we can replace it, right, we will replace it for you. If we can't replace it, then you're not going to pay. Okay. So that's, again, nobody's going to make that offer. Most people build you a GMB and if it gets, you know, penalized or suspended 30 days later, 60 days, 90 days, whatever, guess what? They go, well, too bad. You over optimized it. And you know, that's not my fault. So again, I look at everything I do as long-term. Okay. Cause to me, that's, all there is, right? That's all there is. The best businesses in the world have people that continue to stay with them for life. Products that you love and you continue to buy. A store that you love to shop at. Maybe a place you get your groceries at. You just continue to go there because you like the experience or it's your place, right? Or a restaurant that you just always go to. I look at this as the same way. Like, I have to make sure that you're successful with this or you'll go, I'm never buying anything from that guy again, right? So people love that we made this offer because it's, it's just made it so easy to scale. So eight bucks per month per GMB for 10 months after that, you own them 100%. So um, Michael, do you have any other questions or do we have any questions on yeah, the offer? They're, they're, or just, do jump they're in absolutely in? rolling in here. Before we do, let me tell you guys about my bonus because I've had some questions on that through chat. I got a couple, a couple of Facebook messages. I don't know if you guys heard the dinging going on over here, but uh, I did. <laughs> all right. So uh, if you get 10, uh, I've got a special bonus for you. Pick up 10, you got a thousand credits. Now you guys know my system. Wow. For those that are not on my system, what you're going to get is access to my video traffic Viper with the thousand credits added to it. So this means that you'll be able to use these, uh, the Viper to rank your GMBs as well. I was showing Matthew some of these things that, uh, some Are pretty guys? insane results. I think, would it be cool with you, Michael, if we just um, also like did some kind of maybe like a webinar, like kind of merging our 
merging some of our tactics together. Like you and I will get together because I think the stuff that you showed me and some of the things that I do with like reviews and site structure and other stuff, I think we put those together. It's going to be like magic. Uh, a, a total, total killer. So this, okay. this goes hand in hand. So cool. for you guys to pick up 10, you're going to get a thousand credits. Uh, pick up 20, you're going to get 1750 credits. That's 1,750. Pick up 50, you get 3,500 credits. Uh, and if you buy 100 or more, you get 5,000 credits, uh, which is crazy. That's crazy amount for the guys that are in my, uh, my products. You know that's a ton. Now, here's something really cool. This isn't just one time. Let's say that you pick up 10 this month, and next month you're like, wow, holy smokes, I got a lot of calls coming in. Uh, you, you may say next month, Hey, I want to pick up another 10 or I want to pick up another 20. Uh, all you have to do is write me an email and support and say, Hey, I just picked up 20 and I'll put another yeah. 1750 wow. credits to your account. So wow. this is for life. Every time that you pick up a pack, uh, that's the bonus that's attached to it. So, uh, this is not a one-time bonus. Every time that you buy a pack, you get those awesome. Yeah. It's like an evergreen service. So it's a really good product. It's a really good deal for you guys. Uh, this is super, super good. And uh, what people were also asking, Matthew, is is there a deal for bigger packs? If they pick up, say, 50 GMBs, is it a lower price uh, for the bigger packs? Or No, there's, there's not. But what we're going to do is for anybody that orders 50 or more, I'm going to throw in a 10% bonus for you. Whoa. So if you get 50 GMBs, you pick another five locations, and I'm just going to do those for you on the house. You pick up 100 I'm going to throw another 10 for you on the house. Okay. That's just wow. for. Wow. Just that's crazy. That's okay. crazy. So if they pick up yeah. 100, they get 10%. You get 110. Yeah. You get 10. Because here's the thing. I had somebody ask me this as well. They said, Matt, you know, I want to get a bunch of these. Like, can you do some kind of a deal? I said, you know what? I could give you like a small percentage off. I said, but it's actually better for you to have 10 more GMBs. Because guess what? Those 10 more GMBs are going to make you a lot more money than a little bit of the discount that you're going to get, right? Because imagine you got 10 more GMBs. What if that just got you 10 more phone calls a month? What's that worth? And that's worth more than what you're paying for the 100 GMBs. So I got, um, I just messaged Patrick here. Um, I think he's going to look and see if he can get the, um, phone, the phone counts for that um, attorney stuff. Um, but I also have another message here. I just wanted to show you. Uh, let me just see if I can grab this up. Maybe I can show this on the screen here because I have actually had somewhere between about 40 and 50% of people reorder after their first batch. Some people have ordered, you know, like I said, 10 times because they just keep, just keep adding, just keep adding, just keep adding. So um, I'm just wanting to see, give me like five more seconds to see if I can find this Facebook message because... Oh, this would be great if I could, because this is a really cool story from this guy. Uh, I got a, I got a question while you're looking at that. I got a question yeah. from Eric in the Facebook group, just for me. Um, yeah. How to use the video fiber for benefiting okay. GMBs. Well, Eric, yeah. uh, I'll reply to you in the Facebook group on this because uh, uh, let's keep that to the Viper strategy here. Um, we'll talk. I can't find the message that I wanted. This one just says, I can't thank you enough, man. Appreciate it. But that's, I want results. I don't want to just yeah. you know, praise for me. Um, but anyways, we can, we can post some of this stuff later, but let's do this. Um, I want to get into the naming of these. Um, and then, um, I'm going to throw in another sweet deal for, for you guys. So, um, just hold on to your hats for a second because Michael, I didn't even, I didn't clear this with you, but I think you'll be fine with it because uh, it just it's can hook everybody up. So let's talk about naming and then we'll go to that. So I want to walk you guys through how I name these because that's really important. If you don't name them right, they're not going to rank well. So the key is you need to get the keyword, your, like your main keyword um, and location into the business name. Now, some people might think, well, Matt, doesn't, isn't that like really spammy? Um, this is how I do it and make it not look spammy in order to work. So let's just say, for instance, this is an HVAC business. Okay. So let's say the main keyword is like HVAC or, you know, it could be heating, it could be air conditioning, whatever you're going to target. Okay. So what you can do is you can add a short word or like an abbreviation to the keyword. 
Okay, so let me just give you like an example as to how this would work. So I could say something like VP. Oh, Patrick says he's getting, oh, let's see if he can get me. He doesn't have exact stats. He just says, I'm getting stuff every single week. Well, we need to know exact stats. <laughs> um, uh, but VP HVAC of, and then this is where you would fill in the suburb, okay, or the city that you're targeting. So I could say VP HVAC of Bethesda, okay, or VP HVAC heating and air of Bethesda. Okay, so why do I, and you don't have to name yours this way, people will name them a lot of different ways, but I will tell you this, when you have the keywords in your business name, it dramatically helps your rankings when these go live. So as soon as your GMBs go live, it's going to take about a day or two for it to kind of get into Google's system and, and basically populate into the results, and that's where you're going to see where it hits in the map listings, where it starts at, right? And, and real, real quick, if I could just interrupt, yeah. someone's just asking, what does VP mean? Is that just the name of the business that you just created? It's just something I just made up. Okay, yep. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, I do actually have a, a particular brand that's kind of similar to this. Um, but, yeah, VP could just be anything. So, my point here is you don't have to have the exact match keyword for your business name for this to work, okay? If you do, that's fine, it will work. Um, but I, a lot of times, like to add another word to it because I, I, I don't wanna tip off other SEOs um, as to what I'm doing, okay? You guys are lucky, I'm teaching this stuff outside. This is the first webinar that I've done breaking down every little piece of this, okay? So I don't, you know, like, I don't teach this stuff everywhere. So the key is, you want to kind of hide in plain sight, okay? Don't tell everybody else what you're doing. And <laughs> let, let, them, let them not realize that you exist and that you're, you know, getting all these phone calls. I mean, nobody knows that I'm pulling 900 installation phone calls in a month <laughs> from one little county in or two little counties in New York State, okay? So they don't need to, right? So my key with this here is you need to get the keywords and the location into each GMB. So think of it almost like a franchise. So if I was targeting that DC area that Michael brought up, I would do VP HVAC heating and air of Arlington, okay? And I'm just gonna repeat this for every suburb that's around DC area. Because what's gonna happen now is somebody's gonna be sitting at home in Bethesda, Maryland. And what they're gonna do is they might not type in HVAC contractor or heating repair or whatever in Bethesda. They might just say like, you know, um, uh, HVAC companies near me. And Google's gonna look at where they're searching from and they're gonna go, oh, you're right here in this little area of Bethesda and wham, it's gonna pop into, you know, <laughs> my GMB is gonna pop into the map pack there. So um, let me show you, you mentioned mesothelioma attorney. I don't know why Google is thinking that, you know, I'm in, in Chicago here, but look at this as an example. It doesn't matter what the area is. You have an attorney here that's ranking with no reviews. Mesothelioma attorney. Any of you could actually go out and pick mesothelioma attorney in a, in a metro. I mean, this is, it's showing Chicago. I don't know why it's showing me Chicago, but do this from your own area and you'll be able to see. Um, my guess is that you are not going to see the three pack dominated by people with keywords in the name. Now look at, you got one person here. This might be somebody that, you know, knows what's going on. Cause look at, they don't even have a website attached. <laughs> they don't even have a website attached, right? They're just funneling calls to somebody. Okay. Don't even have reviews, but they're there. So that's, that's how you take advantage of this. I don't know who this particular person is, but I guarantee if you were to search mesothelioma attorney, not necessarily right in Chicago downtown, but if you're in a suburb, okay, again, which is where people a lot of times live, is not just downtown, they live around a city, and you search, I would highly guess that you're going to find not just one suburb, but you're going to find many suburbs where this map pack has got very weak competitors, no keywords in the name, no reviews, and in some cases, no website. So if you think, if you got keywords in the name, if you... If you later added a website, you don't have to have a website right away, but you could later add a website as you start, you know, bringing calls and you want to, you know, take your time to build a website. You can. That HVAC example does not have a website linked at all to any of those listings. 
it is completely barren. <laughs> the installation site is much more built out. That does have location landing pages and they're all tied to the GMBs. So you will get better results, obviously, as you add a website. It takes time to get a website up usually for people and getting those city pages built out and stuff. So start with just the GMBs. Get the calls coming in and then you can invest your energy into the ones that are producing. Okay, so that is how I suggest naming. I call it the franchise model um, and you can just either add of after it, right? Or you can add, um, you know, you can just even say, you know, like this, you can put a dash and the city name, but you really want to work the keywords in. You also want to work that location. That's going to help you get in that snack pack right away versus picking something that's just branded here, like Cooney and Conway. I mean, you could do Cooney and Conway with the city name that will help a little bit, but it's not going to work as well as having even just part of one of your keywords in the business name. That helps a lot. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's genius. Uh, Got a couple of questions coming in. Um, sure. Let's hear, how do you get over the address issue if different areas to your local business uh, address? Okay. I'm assuming that what they're asking is like, you don't have an address in a particular area. How do you get around that? Or is that not what they meant? Yeah, I, I think that's more along the lines of it. Okay. Yeah. So um, what we do is we give you the option uh, in terms of how you want to locate them. We can locate them at like an office building commercially. Uh, we can locate it in more of a residential area. But if, if you're familiar with GMBs, if you're not, I'll explain that, you know, these listings are, you know, we're not, we're not sending like a postcard to somebody's house and like verifying it there or like renting a virtual office. Part of our method and, and what you're, you know, what you're paying for when you get this is that we have the ability to locate these listings anywhere. So if you want to give us an address where you want the listing, we can put it there. If you don't have an address, we can find like a vacant office space or, you know, an area that, you know, doesn't have a business at that we can put that location at. So again, Google would probably not prefer that we're putting up listings because they would rather you buy ads. So I think we all understand kind of that element of it here that, you know, Google doesn't want you to have a hundred or a thousand listings. Okay. Um, and I'll explain a little bit later what would happen if you lost one of these listings. Cause it's, you know, it, it could happen. Um, it, it's much less than 1% of listings that we've lost. Um, but you know, it is a real concern for some people. So I can show you how to, you know, turn that around if you ever do lose a listing down the road. But is that, am I answering their question? I think you answer that perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, do you need a separate phone number and separate website for every GMB? So I would suggest getting a separate phone number for each one. I would not say that you need a website because in the case of the HVAC example, um, I'm just about finished with the website and all the city pages and it's not even attached. So we got 400 and some calls and it didn't even have a website. I would suggest for longevity though, that you do uh, put together a site. You don't need it right away. Um, and you don't, I would suggest that you don't do a separate website for every single listing. That's a lot of effort. The way I like to do it is this multi-location way or franchise model way where I would go do 10 or 20, let's say for this HVAC business all around DC. And I would have one website called just the PHVAC, you know, heating and air. And then I would eventually build out city pages, just little location landing pages for each area, Bethesda, Arlington. And on each of those, then you can optimize those pages. And that's something that I'm going to do for everyone that's getting in on this offer is I will record some extra videos for you guys all on how you would set up those pages and even what you would do to optimize each of these listings. Because again, I, I need you to have success, success with these or you're not going to want to get more, right? Um, I need you to see results with whatever, whatever amount that you're getting. So then you go, oh man, you know, you're like, you're like the guy that's ordered 10 times from me, right? Or the guy that went from a hundred to a thousand. Like, that's what I want for all of you. You need to be making money with these. So you scale. So um, you don't need a separate website for all of them. You don't even need a website right away. But once you get some calls coming in, what you're going to want to do is see where those calls are coming in from. That's why it's important to have a different phone number on each one. If you don't, you don't know where the calls are coming in from. You might have two, you know, you might have two GMBs that are producing a ton of phone calls for you. 
And you might find, like I found it with my own, um, I had some GMBs that I put up in North Carolina uh, for a particular project and we were getting phone calls and I was like, where are these coming from? It turns out we were actually ranking not just in the area that, that I targeted for the suburb, but a little area outside of that. And that's where a lot of the calls were coming from. And I had no reviews on this listing. I'd done no citations and it was still getting calls. <laughs> Amazing, right? Like you would think that it wouldn't get calls, but like Venu, he got a call and there's no reviews on the listings, right? There's no citations. There's no website because he just as of this morning now has ownership of them. So yeah, of those, of those particular ones. Yeah. And he, only, yeah, and there's only just, you know, a handful of GMBs. So, I mean, when you look at it, you don't have to have all that stuff in place, but what I would suggest is as you see where the results are coming in from, it's 80, 20, you focus your efforts on those. If they don't have any reviews on them, get a review or two on them. If you're, you know, if you find that you're number three in the snack pack, maybe not number one, do some citations to push that up. I'll show you everything that I do to push these up. But um, Michael with, you know, his tools as well, showed me some amazing results pushing from like three or four in snack pack to number one or two. So I think what you're going to want to do is use Michael's tools in order to help push you up for those listings where you're sitting maybe at number two, three, or four, and you need a little, you need a little push up. You may not need to do a full thing of citations. If it's a larger city and you're further down, you might want to do citations. But at bare minimum, you need to make sure that you have at least one review on each of your listings because it's going to help your conversions. You will, you will still get calls without it, but it's, it's a lot less than if you actually have reviews. Because, I mean, me personally, I don't call any bit. Like if I'm looking for um, a business locally, I don't call anybody that doesn't have reviews. And I think a lot of you would probably attest to that too. Like you're going to call somebody that's got, right? Like are you going to call this guy? You're going to call this guy? No, you're probably going to call this one or you maybe will search and find some more people. But you're, you're more likely to call somebody that's got reviews and, and positive reviews than you are without. So I've gotten thousands of phone calls from GMBs that don't have reviews, but I've gotten a lot more phone calls from GMBs that have reviews. So just get yourself a review. Careful where you get reviews from. I will give you guys advice on where to get those from. Um, but you don't want to just get any old review because if it's not sticking, that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's the turnaround time for, uh, if someone picks up 10, uh, 50 or a hundred? Yep. The turnaround time should be uh, pretty much the same, no matter your quantity. Cause what we do is we work on your order basically until it's done. So say you go ahead right now and you order like 20 or 50. What we're going to do is you're going to fill out that form on the page. So it's kind of walk you through kind of what you can expect when you order. So what you're going to do first, if you haven't already is you're going to go ahead and you're going to just put your name and email in here. Okay. So once you do that, that will help us to know too that you're coming from Michael. And so Michael's got some sweet bonuses for you. I'm going to lay another bonus on for you in a second that you're going to love. So this will let us know that you're in on this offer, right? So you can make sure you get these bonuses. And on the next page, you're going to see a little video for me explaining how to fill out a spreadsheet. So you'll get the spreadsheet on the next page. And what it has, the spreadsheet's going to have the um, business name that you want. It's going to have the uh, city and state that you want. It's going to have a phone number field and a category field. Okay, so they're highlighted in orange so you can't miss it. And if you have a question, you can just message us. It has our email and support desk right on the thank you page so you can go ahead and ask us any questions. But you're just going to fill that out for each listing that you want. So let's say you fill out your 10 or your 20 or whatever you're doing on that sheet. You're going to send that sheet into our email to our support desk and we'll let you know that we've received it so then you know that they're in the works. Uh, I would expect that it will take about a week for us to turn it around for you. Okay. Now, I know a lot of people are ordering, so if we get backed up, it could take maybe a week and a half or two weeks, but you know, we work from start to finish. So we're gonna work on your order till it's done. So you shouldn't see any longer time frame ordering 50 or 100 than you will 10. It's more just you wanna get your spot in the queue here because we work from start to finish. This first one in, first one's gonna get delivered. You, know? you got 100 people that ordered before you, we're going to have to clear through those before we get to you. So if you have any questions on that, when you send your spreadsheet in or you message in, just say, Hey, how long realistically are we looking for? And we'll give you, you know, a good estimate on it. So that way you're, you know, you're not wondering where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so. that's actually really good to think about too, is uh, what Matthew's saying is the queue 
is uh, not like my, my Q guys. My Q pulls randomly. He's pulling it straight in. So uh, if you have bigger orders too, you want to get them in as fast as you can. Uh, what I mean yeah. by that is you want to submit your information uh, and get your, your orders in because uh, these guys are, I'm seeing opt-ins coming in, flying in. They're flying off the shelf there, Matthew. Uh, yeah. Quick, well, because when people see that you can scale really easily with this, it's like, you know, you're in well, for that's, not that's very much money each month. It's yeah, that's the thing. I mean, someone just told me, hey, I put an order in for, if I put an order in for 20, it's only $160 a month. And this person, you know, probably has spent $200, $300 on just one GMB. Right. You know, and GMB. now they have 20 working for them instead of one. I mean, they're they're going to get calls off of 20 GMBs, right? So then it cash flows itself, right? Because it's almost like virtual real estate in that sense, because guess what? You know, yeah, you got this payment that you have to make for only 10 months, but as long as you actually go ahead and just get a lead or two for yourself and, you know, partner with somebody or sell it or do whatever you want to do to monetize it, we can, you know, talk about monetization um, later. Um, let's like give you my bonus here in a second. You'll see why. Um, but it doesn't really take that many, you know, many calls or many leads or, or much, you know, effort in terms of selling it in order to make back what you're investing to get the GMBs. And then after the 10 months, they're paid off. So what I suggest people do is look at the GMBs as a gateway to even more profits for you. So the GMBs will get calls. They're going to make you money, but don't let it stop there. Use your best performing locations because you'll know that by your, your calls, right? You'll know where they're coming in from. Use your best performing locations and then reinvest some of your profits back in and get some citations. Build some links to your site. So as you do that now, you're not waiting months to get a site ranked. You're getting calls right away, but you're investing a little bit of that back into your website. So then your website will start to rank organically. The benefit of having an organic ranked website is should you ever lose a GMB, you have your website still sitting on page one and you can either get yourself another GMB or what you can do is you can simply reach out to a local business and because you're already on page one, if you take their map listing, again, you'd find somebody that's not ranking well. You'd find somebody that's far back in the maps. It's not on page one. You take their map listing and you set the website to yours. So you'd want to brand your site obviously for them and, and make it, you know, customized for them. But if you then set their map domain to your site, watch what happens. It's like yeah. that. Yeah. They're going to go from nowhere in the maps into the map pack because the map algorithm is blended. We're able to get into the maps right away in the top few results for a lot of these suburbs because nobody understands the naming and the location. If they did, you know, they could just, you know, they'd be there. Local businesses could just do it themselves. They wouldn't need us, but they don't understand that. And so that is your leverage is you're coming in a suburb. There may be a few other businesses in that category, in that suburb, but it's like that attorney example. It's like Conway. It's just branded. You know, it's like they're, they don't have any keywords. So if you come in the suburb and you call it, you know, mesothelioma lawyers uh, help of, uh, you know, whatever, of whatever city name is, you know, you're in the map pack, you get a review or two, people are clicking and calling you instead of that guy. Guess what? You know, now you've got that there. And you're, if you decide to, which this is what I do personally, so you don't have to do this, but this is what I'm doing is I take a little bit of my profits from the calls and I invest them back into the site, into citations and really good relevant links. So my sites then rank organically and you can see what happens. The installation site now gets a lot more phone calls because it's established. And should I lose those GMBs? I still have all the organic rankings. I could rent that out to a local business. I could take their map listing, tie it to my site. They would now be in the maps. I wouldn't have to worry, right, ever about that map listing because it's, you know, it's a local partner. It's their actual physical place. So that is kind of your fallback, if you will, is should Google ever change how this works, right? Or you get a jealous competitor or something and, you know, you lose a map listing, then that's a way to, uh, to future proof that. Now, remember, if you do lose a listing, okay, I'm going to do my best to replace it for you. If for some reason I can't, right, 
I've only had a few go down. I've, I've been able to replace every one of them. It's been less than 1% of all of them that we've created. But let's say some go down. I'll work to replace them for you. If I can't, then you're not going to pay. Okay. So that's what makes this really attractive. Right, Michael? Cause yeah, yeah. I mean, that- be outright, guess what? There's no skin in that game for that guy anymore. You paid him a hundred dollars or $200 for this GMB and you know, you've given him your money and guess what? He's moved on to something else. He's, he's not incentivized to fix your GMB or make you another one because that's taking time away from his other orders. But see, in our case, we're, you know, like we're not going to, we're going to be in the hole, right? Cause obviously there's cost to move a profit, but there's cost to us doing this. So, you know, if, if you have a listing that were to have some kind of an issue or it wasn't working for you, I, I, I have to replace it for you. I have to make things right with you because you wouldn't continue to pay, right? And that would mean that I would end up losing money on it. So I'm playing the long game. I'm making sure that these are going to work for you long term because that's the only way that I'm actually going to make something out of it and that you're going to continue to want to you know, work with me and, and learn from me. So uh, it's a pretty unheard of offer, but I'm about to sweeten it. So here's yeah. my extra bonus. Michael, I didn't even bring this up, but I'm having fun here. This is a good time. And so this is what I'm going to do. Remember I showed everybody those call logs at the beginning of the call, 350 calls for the HVAC company that's uh, you know less than two months old, doesn't even have a website attached, and the installation lead gen site of mine with 900 phone calls. For anybody that has already bought, because we've already got, you know, I, I think quite a few people that have bought because I've seen the, I've seen my email. Like some people, you guys aren't listening to the webinar. You're already filling out your spreadsheet. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting messages here on my phone. People sending in spreadsheets already. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Actually, great, but you know, I want you guys to hear this because this is important. So yeah, pa- pause your keyboard and filling out your spreadsheet for a second and, and hear this out. So these lead gen sites, I, I normally do not show what these are. I don't show the mechanics of what goes into them. But for anybody that is signing up with us here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, well, probably just do it on like a, a live recorded, um, you know, webinar. So if you can't make it, we'll make sure there's a recording. But I'm actually going to walk you through both of these businesses, okay? One has a new website coming on board, the HVC one, okay? So the results from that are not due to the website. It's from the GMBs. This one has results coming from the GMBs and uh, established website with city pages. So you'll be able to see my city pages. You'll be able to see how I interlink uh, my site structure. You'll be able to see exactly what I do, how I built citations to some of the listings. I'm basically going to open both of these sites up. They're real websites. They're real clients. They make me a lot of money. I'm going to trust and it's, it's not let me down so far when I've done this other time. So I'm going to trust that you're investing in this that you will respect uh, my sites, you'll respect the clients, and you will be, um, you'll be richly rewarded because I'm going to open everything up. You're going to see the names. Uh, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see everything. You'll know the business names. You can go look at the GMBs yourself and see how I've located them and see how I've set them up. And I will do that for the HVAC site that I've shown you and this installation website that I showed you. So not only will it be really good inspiration, but I would just suggest that you basically model what I'm doing for your particular niche or your particular area. So I don't know many other people that will show you the exact sites that they have that bring in 900, you know, 900 phone calls a month, but I will show you mine because you're investing in me. I'm going to invest in you. Yeah. That's an absolute killer deal there, Matthew. That's a killer deal. Now let me, uh, I've got a ton of questions here for you. Yeah. Let's get through some of those. Let me, let me go back and see if we can just cover these quickly. So a little, um, because there's so many of them, I want to make sure that we at least get we get some of these. I'll stay. I'll here. stay as long as we need to stay here. So all right, all right. When I get so, amped up on these things. Uh, I, uh, you know, my dinner can wait. I don't mind. All right, perfect. So uh, when we're talking about physical addresses on GMBs, just cover real quickly. Okay. Uh, what do people send citations to if they want to send citations to the GMB? If yeah. there's no physical address, how do they do it? Oh, that, that's an awesome question. So every GMB by nature actually has to have a physical address, okay? So in the GMB listing itself, there's an option for what we call a service area or a service area business. What that just means is every Google My Business listing has to have some kind of address. 
Now, whether that was able to be verified by phone or whether it had to have a postcard sent there, doesn't matter. It does have to have kind of a home base, if you will, an address where that business is at. Now, Google will let you hide that address as a service area business. They'll let you just say, you know what? Don't show my address. Hide my address. For any kind of a business that serves people at their location, contracting companies, service businesses, any, anybody that's going to be physically going to the customer to do the work. Google says it's normal and we want you to hide your address if people do not come to your location. So Google specifically says hide that address. So when you're submitting your spreadsheet to us of the listings that you want us to create, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you, we know this by category, but if we're unclear, then we'll, you know, we'll confirm it with you. But we will say, look, do you want this address to show or do you want to hide it? In 95% of the cases, I would say we hide it. The only examples that I've had so far where people wanted to show the address were um, in some of those legal examples, like an attorney. And they want it located at like a, a big office building and they want to show the address so it looks like, you know, it's their actual office there. Um, but it is not required. We can actually hide the address on every single listing, doesn't matter the category, we can hide it, all right? Okay. And so in that case, where would you build the citations to? If you're gonna build citations, you will build it to that address, okay? So we give you that address that's used, you don't have to build citations to it. If you wanted to, that's the address that you would use to build it to. Okay, perfect, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Stephen uh, Henby has asked, uh, what happens if Google asks to re-verify the GMB later? Yep. If they ask to re-verify, what we'll do is we'll help you to get it re-verified. Okay. If we can't get it re-verified, we'll put a new one up for you as a replacement for it. And if they don't like that, which I've not seen that happen, but if they don't like that, then at that point we'd say, look, do you want to do a different listing elsewhere? Or if not, you know, cancel your payment on this and you know, that one just will we'll wipe that one out. So Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Uh, David uh, asked, uh, this was earlier, so we're, we're going down from the top guys. So if you're putting in new questions, we'll, we'll get to you. Uh, David said, let's say we order 50 and only 30 rank. Can we change the other 20 or do we have to keep trying to rank them and continue paying? Yeah, no, I'm pretty understanding on this. So I would suggest if you're unsure, like say you're going to do 50, right? You pick your areas, you're going to send your spreadsheet to us and I look at every single spreadsheet that comes through. So if I see right away on your spreadsheet that these just, and I can tell because I've done a lot of these. If I, because you got me personally looking at this for you. If I look at it and I can see, you know what, the way you've named these or the way these are located or I know this niche and I'm not confident that those are going to rank well for you, I'm going to say something. I mean, I've said it to a couple people already that have ordered. I said, you know what, like you don't have the city name in here. And I think your targeting could probably like be a little bit better. I'll tell you, cause I want you, you know, I want you to see success with this. That being said, if you've got a bunch of them out there and it's been a few months and you're not seeing results on, on a few of them or some of them, then, um, then I will help to change those for you or repurpose them. And again, nobody else will do that. Now I will do that for you realize it might take a little bit longer than a week, right? Because I got to fit you into the existing queue, but I will help you to do that. Nobody else is going to do that for you, but I will help you to do that. So the okay. key is good selection up front though. I'd rather not have to change them later for you, right? So the key is good selection up front. So when you put, you know, your order in, uh, I'll look at it. If I see anything that looks a little wonky, I'll mention it. If you're unsure, when you put your spreadsheet in, you'll be able to send a message with it. Just say, hey, Matt, can you check this? Or I'm not sure about this. And I'll look at it. But if you run into something where it's just not working or, you know, you're like, dang, I should have niched down and did the animal removal instead of pest control, then, you know, I'll, I'll work with you just like I did with that guy and said, look, I don't want you having GMBs sitting there that aren't doing anything. You know, that's not going to be any good. So yeah, I'll help to uh, repurpose those. Okay, into, perfect. Uh, another, an either another niche or, you know, another suburb or something. I mean, I mean, guys, I don't know if you guys understand what Matthew, well, I'm sure you do if you're, if you're in this. That is amazing. No one else would ever offer such a thing. That's crazy. That's don't just take, crazy. They don't take the time to do it. Yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. That's I just hope crazy. you guys can tell I care. Like, I really like doing this stuff, but like, ultimately, like, the biggest thing that I live for is, is, is the Facebook messages. When you message in and you're like, 
this is freaking awesome. Like one guy messaged in, he's like, I have already sent 40 calls this week to this lead partner. And like, you got to realize like this guy just told me he's going to spend another two grand a month with me. And like two grand for him was like, holy smokes, you know, it's just like changed his life. And so you know, I'm, I'm pretty blessed. Like I've, you know, uh, my, my life is, is really, is really pretty awesome. And at this point where I'm at with, you know, with, I've already got the toys, I've got the house, I've got the cool stuff, I got the vacations, I've got an amazing family, like I'm, I'm in good health, I'm grateful for that, like I'm looking at contribution, like I'm looking at contribution. Last year I fed like, I think it was about, I wanna say 300,000 people um, through feeding, 300,000 meals I should say through Feeding America, maybe 400,000 meals through Feeding America. Um, and so I'm huge on charity and I'm huge on contribution. And to me that starts with just serving my customers. So look, I need you guys to get results with this because I won't keep doing it. If I don't see like, if I don't see the fulfillment there, like if, if, if I don't get those success stories and if I don't get those wins and those like, Oh my gosh, Matt, this is cool. I doubled my income doing this. Or you know what? I added an extra thousand dollars a month and that really helped me because you know, I've been able to, you know, pay down this bill or send my kid to college or whatever it is that is there for you. That's important. Like that's the kind of stuff I live for. I know Michael's that way too. He really cares about you guys. And that's what I live for. So like, if I don't see that, if I don't get that juice out of helping people, then like I could just go, you know, sit and like, you know, watch the stock market or something. <laughs> and that's, you know, yeah, that's some great. days that's going to be exciting for me and other days it's not. So like, you know, you, you know, um, I just had, I just had the scene from Dick and Jane, uh, pop into my forehead, uh, here of, uh, Dick, you know, uh, after he had all that money, he's like, what are you doing Dick? And he's got a big old cigar in his mouth. And he's like, ah, oh, you know, I'm in, I'm in the stock exchange. You know, it's like, I'm stealing money. Well, obviously it was, if you ever saw the movie, it was great. <laughs> But uh, you just pop it gets, that in. It gets, right. you know, once you've had some success, it gets, most, most of the successful people that I know get bored really easily, right? Yeah. Because unless you have that juice or that excitement, like it, it, gets, it gets boring. And so at this point, I'm not motivated by money. I'm motivated by a lot of, making a lot of friends, right? And having a lot of contribution yeah. and just like, you know, making a good mark on the world that like just, just fills me up. So uh, I want that for all of you guys. You need to do well with this or like I won't keep doing it, right? I will like do something else. Uh, so, you know, make me proud. That's what I say to my students. I'm like, make me, make me proud. Send me those messages and like tell me how you're crushing it because that's, that's, what, I, uh, that's what I live that's for. That's what you live for. That's yeah. awesome. All right, so I got a question over here in uh, Facebook from Eric Wagner. This was a little bit older. Okay. Uh, he said, if we already have a GMB, um, can you build off of what they already have? Um, maybe we can get some clarification. So if Eric, have, even like hitting other surrounding areas around that, yeah, I think that's what he means. Like say, you know, yeah. there was an, another gentleman that spent the $200, uh, on a big GMB and he's been right. pounding it, you know, in an area for 300,000, he's been pounding it for three months. Not, so I think that's kind of what Eric is going after here is that if he's got yeah. a, um, you know, a big area, he's already got a GMB mm -hmm. targeting a big area. Uh, mm -hmm. can you just expand off of that for him? Yeah, we do that a lot actually is like basically either client expansion or lead gen expansion. I will tell you this, if you already have a website attached to that, that is, um, I mean, that's a little bit of a jump start. So if you already have a site attached, then what you can do is, I mean, we'll show you how to make additional pages. If you don't already have like suburb pages on the site, you want those because then what you're going to do is you're going to tie each GMB, it's website URL that, you know, you can put in the dashboard. Um, and again, you'll have full access to these so you can optimize to your heart's content. Um, but you're going to take that website field and you're going to point it to the suburb page or like the city landing page uh, in your site. So that works really well, that expansion model. If you have one GMB, then don't make another one for like right where you're at because you will have the proximity for that one already. But go ahead and just basically make like a ring or whatever shape it is for that particular city and just cover around that. Go hit all the other areas that you don't have and tie it back to that same website. Remember, because there's some magic in having all this traffic coming from GMBs in a local area to that, that site. I mean, Google's just seeing like, okay, there's people from Arlington, Bethesda, like there are all these people that are hitting this website. It actually helps validate your whole site. Okay, that's why I love doing the GMBs first before I even have the site going, because now what happens is I plug, think about this, I do all these GMBs, 
but then I'm building my website and I plug the website in after, I already have all this traffic that like really isn't going anywhere because there's no website for them to click in the map results, right? I'm like that, you know, I'm kind of like that attorney here that doesn't have any website attached. Yeah. But now imagine if I had 10, 20, 50, 100 of these and now I attach a website to it, with all the city pages. What's going to happen? The website's immediately going to get traffic from all those GMBs. I mean, day one, you're going to get traffic. Few people will click through, right? One here, one there, they start clicking through. And so now that validates that your website is actually valuable. So now as you're building your citations and you're building links and you're doing videos and everything else you're going to do, Google is not suspect because you have real local people that are real local people. I'm saying that for emphasis because that is like typically tough to get is real local people going to your site. It validates everything that you're doing and uh, it will help you organically, but it will also help your map rankings too. So it's, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just grateful that like this model just kind of came to be because it's just, it's just fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really kind of addicting for a lot of people. They get their map listings going and start getting some calls in and they add some more and they add some more and you know, now they're client. Now they look like a hero for their, for their clients too, because they're just like, the clients are like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. You've blown up our phone calls. Like how, you know, how are you? Yeah. Like, you know, we yeah, want to do exactly. more. I mean, that's most people is like, my clients expanding. Like I just, I had a guy that messaged earlier today and I'll be able to find this one because this came in like about an hour before the webinar. Um, here he is right here. And what did he say? Matt said, um, I think we'll be building out more of these for solar soon. Um, and he said, let me just get with the client. I'm just pulling in info for the first nine of them. So yeah, so there you go. There's a guy that's taking this and a, a client has a solar biz, solar, I guess, solar panel installation business, right? And um, client says, hey, we want more business in this area. So Matt's going in. This is not me, Matt. This is another Matt. He's going in and getting nine more areas for them. And then he'll drive all that to them. And, you know, he looks like a, he looks like a hero to them. You know, they don't know how he's making all this stuff happen. He's just making their phone ring and they love him for it. So, and I uh, guessing they're probably going to be paying him a good chunk more. So it's a good deal. Yeah. Okay. So quick question. How many, uh, are there any niches? Because I know from my uh, experience, I was looking at a couple of different people out on the net to buy GMBs from. And I was told, well, you can't do garage doors. You can't do locksmith. We can't do HVAC. We can't do, we can't do, we can't do. I'm like, well, what can you do? So right. do you have any niches that you uh, block? Yeah, there's a couple of those that you mentioned that I'll just elaborate on, which is garage door repair and locksmith. And so in both of those niches, they've, they've been heavily spammed over a number of years. I've got, I've not done um, work in locksmith, but I do actually have a client in the garage door repair space. And so it's kind of cool because I've seen kind of Google evolve over the years. And those are, you know, technically we can do them in those niches, but here's what's going to happen. They're going to get flagged, they're going to get suspended, and you're going to get frustrated. And so I will not build them for you in garage door repair or locksmith because the, the lifespan of those listings is very, very short. Um, and I just, I don't want to set you up for that because that's not going to be fun when you see that your GMBs get suspended. So I don't do listings in those two. Everything else is completely open. No problems in any other niche. Okay. All right. Uh, HVAC, next. Plumbing, moving, roofing, whatever else you want to do. And there's a lot of special niches that people throw at me that I'd never seen before. And all of them have been good. So if you have a question on it, you know, after you've put your name and email there um, and you've gotten your spreadsheet, you can just send in a message and just say, Hey, I'm looking at this niche. Or I'm looking at this area and I'll be help, you know, I'll be happy to help guide you. I mean, I've done a lot of this so I can, um, I mean, if I were in your shoes, I would, I would lean on me and, uh, <laughs> and use my experience because it's, um, you know, I, I've seen a lot and I know it works. So just ask a question if you're not sure. Okay, perfect. Uh, another question is, uh, when do they purchase? When do they actually pay you? When do not they until pay? the listings are live. So they're going to submit the spreadsheet. We're going to get the listings all up. And then we're going to send you a message back to your email that'll say, hey, congrats, your listings are live. We'll put all the live URLs right there to the map listings. So then you can go one by one and go see, oh my gosh. And then usually what most people do is then they go search 
uh, in Google for that particular area. And they're like, oh my gosh, I got a couple already in the snack pack already. This is amazing. And, uh, and then, okay, we'll give you a payment link and you'll just, in the payment form, there'll be a, a box for quantity. So you'll just enter in whatever quantity that you ordered. So if you ordered 20, you put 20 in the box. You hit update and you can check out with PayPal or credit card and, um, and it'll set up that subscription for you for the 10 months. And, uh, and that's it. As soon as you do that, then, you know, it'll say that, you know, congrats, you've paid. You can just shoot us a little message back saying, hey, great, got it paid and we'll see your payment come through. And then uh, what we'll do is typically takes about 24 hours because we have to go into every one of those listings individually and assign them to you. So it does take, you know, then about a day for us to actually, from the time you pay, to actually assign those listings to you. But then you'll be able to log right into your dashboard with whatever Google, you know, email or emails you want to use and, uh, and see them all there. So another question that I get from people is when they're filling out the sheet, like should they give us one Gmail or should they give us more than one Gmail to put those in? We don't need your password. We just need the email that you want it assigned to because um, we'll take the listing once it's live and assign it to you. So what I suggest to people is if you're going to have like, let's say 20, anywhere from like, let's say 10 to 20 listings, you're fine with just having a single email as your manager, uh, as your manager email. It's no big deal. We have some accounts that we've done for our own projects that have one, uh, one email that's managing a hundred accounts have not had any adverse effects with it. If it makes you feel better to have just one email, cause they're all created in their own Gmails, but in terms of managing them for convenience, it's nice to have just one manager email so you can log in see all your Gmails there. So if you want to upload photos or do anything, they're all right there. But if you want to separate them out and give us a different Gmail for each one or something, um, some people feel better about that, then, um, then you can on the sheet, you'll just put a different email for whatever listings that you want uh, in those accounts. And then we'll just, you know, assign them to different emails. So they're all yep. done one by one. So whatever you want them assigned to will do. So we're pretty, yeah, that that's amazing. That's amazing. I mean, that's crazy uh, that they are. <laughs> I mean, this is also why I say people, you don't try to make these yourself because like yeah. I have a very large team of people that work on these. Right. And there's a lot of nuances to getting them done. Right. And so, yeah, but, but Matthew, man, that's just nuts, dude. I mean, think about it. Someone could buy 50, well order 50 yep. and a week later, 50 get delivered to them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you've got 50 and you've got them out there already. And then you pay them. That's nuts. That's like getting the Lamborghini and, uh, having it yeah. parked in front of your house for a week and then get the yeah. keys. You know, that's awesome. You know, you're yeah, last, car, last car I bought, I had to, uh, I had to wire them the money and then I had to wait a week for the thing to be shipped from Pennsylvania to me. That was a hard week to wait. I'm like, wait a second. I just sent you all this money and this thing is like on a transport. And then the transport guy is like delayed. And so I'm like, is this guy off driving my car somewhere? <laughs> it was nerve wracking. I tell you, my wife was nervous. Um, I'm like, just relax. It, it will get here. It will get here. And, you know, and then she sees it shows up and she's like, you know, look at the odometer. Look at the odometer. I'm like, did they go driving this thing? <laughs> uh, uh, you, you had like the, uh, oh, what is that movie? Ferris Bueller's Day Off when they take the, uh, <laughs> when they take, what was it? The old Porsche? And they go out and yeah. they ride around all day. <laughs> yeah. 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 And this is not a slow vehicle. So like, you know, I was, uh, <laughs> I did check the odometer actually. I looked at my paperwork and I was like, okay, you know, it has, it doesn't even have one mile added. I'm like, whew. You know? uh, much better, much better on that. He calls me, he's like had a, had a tire go out on his semi. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's crazy. So that's what's nice. You don't have to deal with any of that here, right? We give you the GMBs and you know, you may be like, Venu or Matt or Patrick or Kyle, uh, when you have like these uh, listings go up, um, because we make sure everything gets up first. We check everything before we deliver it. So the listings, don't be surprised if you actually get a phone call. Uh, it's happened dozens of times where people got a phone call before we delivered the listings to them. And um, yeah, well, even even like Venu, you know, for that to yeah. happen. So let well, me. That was uh, like that was like Dean here on the. Uh, so there's there's a guy that's ordered here named Dean. And so you can see here in his screenshot, he said, um, uh, I'm already getting calls about my uh, niche without even having a working website or optimization. He, what, he, what he actually messaged me in Messenger was this. He said, um, he's like, I just got a call on, you know, I just got a call on my Twilio account. I don't know how people are finding, finding this. Is this like spam or something? Like he was kind of concerned. And I said, um, you know, 
Dean, you know, did you, did you check the call? And, uh, and he actually checked the call because he had been sent, he actually had sent it to a towing company. And here it was a real, it was, it was actually a real lead. He actually got a real lead. He landed yeah. the client. And so you can see like right away on his little chart here, you can see he gets this little spike up of calls. I mean, this, this day right here, this first day he got a call and the next one he got four and then next day nothing. But then the next day he got like one. And so it, that was before he even had access to anything. And so it kind of startled him because he didn't like, I didn't tell him that the map listings were up because they hadn't gone through all of our checks yet. So he started getting some phone calls and he was just kind of puzzled. Like, where are these coming from? Like, what am I, what am I doing wrong? Like, why, why do I have phone calls coming in when I don't have a website and I haven't paid for anything yet? So like, it's okay. If you get, if you get phone calls coming in and you haven't paid for anything, you don't have a website up, don't freak out. Like, you know, just, just probably give it a day or two and you'll get an email from us saying, okay, now it's time for you to set up your payment and, you know, we'll help you. But um, it's happened a lot of times, so it'll happen to some of you. Yeah, I, I'm sure it definitely will. Um, let, me, let me address one question here for me. So David asked a question and uh, he said, if we don't have your tool yet, any deals offers or can I order a 10-pack? Yeah, so for this particular, um, this is actually the best deal that you'll ever get on my Video Viper. Uh, I got to tell you that, David. Uh, right now, my Video Viper is, it's a monthly. So uh, I have a monthly on it. So if you pick up just a 10-pack, uh, you're going to get the Video Viper if you're not already one of my customers. And uh, you'll get the Video wow. Viper and the uh, 1,000 credits. So you can start to use that to rank those GMBs. And uh, that's crazy. It's crazy, crazy, crazy deal because my monthly right now is uh, for the Video Viper, it's 167 a month. So um, that's, that's what I have. Can I, can I buy this offer, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> I want it too. I want the Viper. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a deal right now running that I did with another marketer. It was $97 a month. So uh, that uh, wow. pick up a 10 pack and you get yourself your hands on the video Viper, which is awesome. So just want to address count that real in. quick. Count me in. <laughs> yeah, count, count you in. So we got 45 new questions that came in uh, over the last few minutes. So let me scroll down through here okay. and see if we can uh, start to address hey, I'll these. I'll stay and answer them. You got a good group. So I'm just going to pour some water for myself here. And Yeah, go, go for it. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Do you recommend we have a minimum of 10 for each niche? Uh, can one GMB generate enough niches? Um, what I would suggest doing is, is sticking, like get 10 for, um, for a particular niche and, 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 and like, don't spread yourself too thin. The people that I see that, um, get, you know, a few calls, but not like a deluge of calls is they spread themselves too thin. Okay. They pick just one over here and one over there and they did five different niches. And the people that are most successful with this take one niche dominate a metro and then once that's working another niche in the same metro or different metro in that same niche so me personally once i have a particular niche that's working like i just keep running with it i just keep expanding right whether it's geographic area or go get other market areas and do the same thing and the reason i like to do that is because like when i show you guys my sites you'll see um I'm a fan of leverage. Like I, I want to build something and have it continue to work for me. So I don't want to have to go find new citation sources. I don't have to go find relevant links for another niche. So I take my same thing. And I just keep expanding it. Cause once you get enough relevance in a website and you get traffic coming from these GMBs, you don't even need to do citations. In the installation site example, I'm going to show you, I only did uh, citations for maybe 20 of the listings. After that, I didn't even bother doing citations. The site itself had enough relevance that just by adding the GMBs to it, we pop into the snack pack for almost every suburb that we make right away. So if you're already in the snack pack, number one or number two or three, you probably don't need to even do your citations. I mean, you can if you want, but again, this is all about leverage and scale. So, I mean, I can show you down the road how to get citations really cheap. That's kind of beyond this, this call. But the bottom line is there's no sense in buying citations for something if it's already doing really well in the snack pack. So save your citation budget for a different listing that's number four or five that you need to push up into the snack pack. So I would stick with one to start. Um, you're going to do better and it's going to be easier to sell it too because 
you're going to have more calls coming in from a tight defined area versus, well, I got one call today from this one, but I didn't get any calls on this one, you know, today, but oh, tomorrow I got two calls. You know, it's so scattered that like, you're going to have happier lead partners if you have momentum with them and you're sending them kind of a nice stream of leads versus sending them one here and then another one in a couple weeks. You know, like you want to really dial it in because you're going to have happier partners that way. And that's really the easiest way to grow is just let your partners tell you what they want. Can you get me, can you get me more business for this service? Can you get me more business in that area of town? Yeah. And you just let like, that's what most people are doing. It's like they'll, they'll get some stuff rolling and then just let your partners help you dictate where to go. They'll tell you the areas that are the best areas. They'll tell you the, the parts of town that they want the business in or what line of business or service that is, you know, is what is highest profit. Like I had a plumber tell me, he goes, Matt, if you could get me ranking for water heaters, that I would like to do those all day long because I make like 800 bucks, you know, doing this water heater thing versus just a little toilet leak. And guess what? Go search water heaters wide open. And there's a great niche for anybody that wants it. It's wide open. Everyone wants to just rank for plumber. No one thinks to rank for water heaters. And if you cover a whole metro area, you get a lot of water heater calls and um, you'll make a very happy plumber. So there's a good niche for somebody that needs it. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good niche. Uh, so you, it looks like you've already got a fan here. Uh, Steve <laughs> Richard says, I bought a few of the more expensive GMBs. But from now on, I'll only buy from Matthew. <laughs> so, I, I mean, that's, that. that's, uh, that's a really good thing. So, Jacques, Jacques awesome. actually pronounced your name correctly this time. I was joking ahead of the webinar with uh, Matthew. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I told him that I had a, a live webinar mastermind, and I slaughtered your name. And uh, I got severely ridiculed by all of my members, which I uh, <laughs> needed a good reminder of humility in my life. So, uh, it's yeah. Jacques. So Jacques said, I'm a little disheartened the system doesn't necessarily work for physical products. Uh, yeah. I was going to go ahead with an initial order, exchange a couple of emails with Matthew. Um, he said, don't mention the niche, but... Uh, well, well, Jacques mentioned me on that. I think that may be one of the only exceptions, okay? I'm not going to say what your niche is, but um, that's a little bit different. That, that is a physical product that has local intent. There's not many that have that. That has local intent. And the reason I know that is because my own mother actually just purchased that particular product that you messaged me about locally. Okay. And so I think that may be the one exception to the rule. I have built a few of those for people. Um, but I can't, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say what it is. Cause out of fairness to you that, that it is pretty wide open. Not a lot of people are in that space. I do think that is, um, is an exception and based on, you know, based on what I just told you guys earlier, I'll put them up for you. And if, uh, you know, it, if you're not getting any calls and not producing for you, then we'll switch it to something else. But um, I have a few other people that have bought those and, uh, and are getting calls. So, but I don't really can, I mean, I didn't think of that as more of a, uh, as a product like the wine box to me, that's something different. That's something that people actually would seek out. The key here is they need to seek out that product locally, not seek out something else and have us put a product that's adjacent to that. Like if they're actually looking for that product, that's one thing. People looking for wine aren't necessarily looking for the personalized box, right? So that is a tougher, that is a tougher uh, thing to do is to move them from total wine store over to the personalized box. It's going to be pretty tough. But in your case, they're looking for that particular product and it's just a matter of, am I going to be able to buy it locally and find something locally or am I going to be able to buy it online? They may not even know they can get it online. So I, I think, I think that's going to work for you. But, um, if you're unsure, just message, you know, start with a smaller order and see how it goes and, uh, you can scale up from there. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Uh, so I got one from Steve Richard again. Steve asked me, uh, is there a monthly fee, Michael? Okay. For me, for the Viper, um, there is a monthly if you want to be a full-time Viper member and, uh, the benefits differ a little bit. So if you buy the pack and you get the thousand credits, let's say you get 10 and you get a thousand credits, uh, you'll get access to the video Viper. The only difference is, is that uh, when you're running the Viper, the max that you'll be able to earn back is 100 credits per month. Being a one-time member is what I count it as. Whereas if you're like a full-time, you know, monthly member, you're going to be able to earn back about uh, 400 credits per month. Uh, because the way the Viper works is it's a crowdsourcing 
tool. So everybody in the network helps everybody out. They run a little tool in the background. It does the searches, it views the videos. Um, so far, uh, the Viper has watched 4.8 million videos. We're going to hit 5 million by the end of this month, uh, which is going to be pretty darn cool. So that's the way it works. So you're getting an amazing deal. You're getting the, the one-time fee. Let me give you an idea. The one-time fee right now for Video Traffic Viper is uh, $397 for one time. And with that, you get 1,000 credits. So you could pick up a 10-pack GMB here for uh, 80 a month. And you're getting, um, you know, a thousand credits and the Viper. Uh, so you would have to normally pay four hundred dollars to get that. So you're getting a killer deal with this. You're getting awesome GMBs. You're getting the ability to rank, and you're just getting a really hand down uh, type of awesome tool. So hopefully that addresses your question, Stephen. For anybody else that again has joined in here that are not uh, Viper members, I gotta tell you what though, you'll see in the video of Viper amazing strategies in fact uh and i won't take up too much more time here on this uh oh, this, is actually, good. this ties hand in hand with gmbs you know oh gmbs are totally rocking it out but uh i <laughs> i actually ranked uh matthew's uh affiliate link using the video viper yes. and all you type in is you can type in matthew fairstig gmb in the google and I am number three on page one of Google, and I did that with the video Viper. So I actually no, ranked, you did you did that in like two days though. <laughs> I did that in two days with the video Viper, and all I did was link it up to the video that I ran through the Viper. So the only way I knew that is there's a gentleman in here uh, who actually asked me uh, who was doing the webinar tonight. I was hesitant in giving them the name because I know what people do. People go and they look it up and they buy it directly from the person. So sure enough, the guy went and he looked up Matthew and he was like, I can't believe it. I just saw your, your page. The only page that was on there for Matthew was mine. So it's, uh, it's awesome. great because Matthew has done this for other marketers and none of their pages have ranked on page one of Google. Only mine used it in a couple of days. I was pretty impressed. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was really cool. So just to answer that question, this is super powerful. And the way it works with the GMBs is really awesome. So it goes hand in hand here with what Matthew has. So let me let me move down here because now we've got around 52 questions left. Um, <laughs> we're not so, decreasing the question load. Michael, we've got to answer faster. We're, we've got to answer faster. we got to answer faster. Okay, so let's hear. Uh, Gary, okay. Uh, Keith says, uh, when, do, when you say a business name, can I use my client's business name? You can. Clear it with them first because, you know, you're putting – you're basically putting up other locations for them. Um, so, you know, get them, get them on board with what you're doing. Uh, you know, that, that, that's key. Don't just go, you know, put up other things for them without them knowing about it. And I, most of my clients have been, you know, completely okay with that. The few that were a little more apprehensive than what we did was I said, okay, no problem. If you don't want to do it under your name, that's not a big deal. Um, you can just create like a, a lead generation name and either, have it as a supplement or sell them leads. I mean, however you want to work it. But if, if they don't want their name attached to it, then you can create a different name and still point those calls right over to the client. Or, you know, in some cases, some of my members are having people like either they themselves or they've got somebody that actually acts as like an answering service and will listen, like will answer the phone call. So when you call VP, HVAC of whatever, you know, they'll pick up and get the information and say, okay, great. You know, let me patch you through to my, um, you know, to my service coordinator or my tech or have them call you back. And, you know, then they basically kind of hand it off to the business that is actually the one that's buying the lead or paying for that sale. So that's another way to handle it. That works really well if you want to get that detailed. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I expect that you guys will probably have, you know, um, questions about even how, how you can maximize them more and what do I do once I have my website and how do I make the most of that? And so um, what we'll do is uh, I'll just give you guys uh, you know, we'll work it with Michael where we'll just, you'll know, set some kind of a, a webinar up that I'll run for you for everybody that's, that's in on this. And uh, you know, I'll again, break down the sites for you, show you examples, show you what I'm doing and uh, you know, I'll be available to answer your questions and make sure that, uh, that you get this and that it works. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, I've, I've seen a couple of questions back and forth, both on Facebook and in the chat. And I think, I, I think this is a good way to address this. So the question I've been seeing is, um, okay, let's say that we set up these GMBs. 
how do we find the clients? I don't want to do it to a third party type of thing. So what I would say, guys, and I'm sure Matthew will agree uh, on this uh, method perhaps, is I would get something like Jill's office. You hire Jill's office. They make the phone calls for you to the local people. You don't have to worry about the crappy third party that's going to give you $10 per call where you could be getting $80 per call. So that's what I would do is I would go to jillsoffice.com, set it up, go in there, talk to them, direct your calls to them, have them call up the local clients, set up the business calls with you, bada bing, bada boom, you've sold your, uh, your, your stuff. So that's what I would do. Is that what you would recommend? What that does too, Michael, is it creates a higher value lead. So some yes. of the people in my group, I would say that are, are doing this at the highest level when they're generating, you know, hundreds, thousands of phone calls a month. What they've discovered is they're able to charge a lot more per lead when the lead is not just sold as a lead, but more of like, you know, an appointment or it's vetted already. And even, you know, for my own projects, the things I make the best money with, um, like per lead are actually billed like per sale. Like literally I'm getting, you know, and you don't start with this necessarily. You can start with just selling the, the lead and then maybe having somebody vetted and then you maybe get yourself actually ownership in, in a particular business that you apply this for. Um, but you know, the key is getting, getting in the game and, and showing businesses like that you can bring them the calls because really in terms of selling this, it's a hundred times easier than trying to sell SEO because ultimately businesses want phone calls. I mean, if you need a way, like if you already have phone calls coming in and you're not sure how to sell them, I'll tell you right now, this is the easiest way ever to sell them is you just send some phone calls to a business. Okay. So you look at somebody that's already advertising in AdWords and spending money and you send some phone calls to them. Okay. You have to look at your state laws as a few States, you know, you have to like double record and stuff and spell out that you're actually recording a call. But, um, but you can, you know, if you do it right, you can record the phone call and say that the calls recorded and, uh, you send them the calls and guess what? Um, you keep track of the logs and after you've sent them like four or five people, then you call the business up and it's not like a cold call. You just say, Hey, you know, I've referred a few people to you and, um, I just wanted to make sure that you're taking care of them. And it's, it's almost like it's got like not a concern tone, but it's, Hey, it's not, Hey, this is Matt with, you know, I automate or with Matt with summit marketing systems. And I'm, 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 I'm calling to see if you No, it's not a cold call. It's just saying, Hey, I've referred some people to you and just, you know, I want to make sure that you're taking care of them. Um, and so, Oh, well, 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 yeah, who's this or who did you refer? And so it's a, you just totally disarm them. You talk to whoever it is that's you know responsible for this. You can find the owner's name or marketing manager's name or whatever, and you can talk to them. Um, but you just name drop the people that are on the recordings. So whoever they got an appointment with or whoever they set up you know business with, if it's like, okay, yeah, can I get your name? We'll come out and do an estimate. Yeah, my name's Joe, and here's my number. You know, and I live at blah 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 blah. And so then you're talking to this you know owner or manager on the phone. You say, yeah, well, I you know I sent you Joe who you're, uh, you set up an appointment with to bid the new, um, new furnace installation. I also sent you Mary, who you went out to do the repair for. Um, and I sent you, uh, you know, the XYZ, you know, company, uh, that is uh, the one that's, you know, wanting you to bid the, uh, you know, the, the new facility add on that they're doing. So now they know that you're not just some marketer. You're not just somebody that's calling to say like, you know, I want to sell you something. They're like, Oh, well, who are you? Um, well, how'd you, how'd you send us these people? Like they're, they're intrigued by you because you just sent them real customers. You've not tried to sell them anything. Okay. You've not came in trying to pitch them and now they want to know who you are, what you do. And you can just say, Hey, you know, let's, well, you know, why don't we just, you know, why don't we just grab coffee or why don't we have a meeting or, you know, let's, you know, when it's, it's a good time or if it's now, whatever, let's, you know, just kind of talk about it. I can explain a little bit more about, you know, how I'm referring people to you and, you know, let's see if it makes sense for, you know, for me to send you more people and work out an arrangement that, you know, um, fits with your marketing budget and, uh, you know, grows your business and it's just casual and they, there's no, you know what I mean? You're not trying to, you're not trying to shove it. You've delivered value first, right? You, you gave them some free customers. They can't say no to you. I mean, if they do, then you just go do it with the next person and you'll get the next one. So it's just like way easier than cold calling. You know, just give, give value, give people some free business and then say, gave you some business. Like, let's talk. Oops. I was totally muted there. My oh, bad. Okay. Oh, uh, I was talking to myself. 
I want to tell you guys, you. Uh, <laughs> if you haven't already, opt in, put your name on the form, because I got to tell you, I've already seen about 80 or 90 uh, that have come in total. Um, I know that uh, 60 have come in during the call here, and I did some before. So uh, I'm going to be emailing the list out, and I got to tell you, when it goes out to the list, it's really going to blow up. So if you want to get in on the queue, uh, since you're here first, submit your information uh, now, get in there, get on the queue. That'd be a really great thing. But uh, I know it's going to fill up fast. So those peeps that uh, really want to get in there and get your GMBs out quicker, the faster, uh, do it before I email the list. Because if I email the list, you may be in the back of the line and uh, want to make sure that you guys get taken care of. I see some great, great feedback coming in here already. I know some of my people are in your group too. And so when they hear that, you know, I've sweetened the deal and I'm like, you know, adding like, you know, the, the extra 10% listings on and then like going to do this extra series and stuff. They're going to be like, well, can I get on that? <laughs> yeah. so they're they're going to they're gonna come by in too. So, you know, that'll add to the queue. Yeah, definitely. All right. So, uh, Diane Hill says, uh, if we order for an area in a niche, and I've seen this by a couple of people phrased yeah. a little bit differently each time. If we order for an area in a niche you've already built for someone else, will you let us know so we can change it up? How do you I handle will. that? Because there are a yeah. lot of people here that may be touching some of the same areas. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I can't promise exclusivity, but I will tell you, like, if you say, look, Matt, like, is somebody already in that area? I will definitely tell you. I can tell you this. It's only happened once so far. And they just, it, and they're just like, oh, okay, well, that's no big deal. I was looking at this other niche too, so I'll just do this other one. So um, I'll tell you though, if you want to know, I'll tell you, but I, I can't, I can't be exclusive because there's just, because people expand, right? They start, they get 20 and then they're like, oh my gosh, this is working so well. Now they move into another metro. So they just keep going. Um, but also it will be pretty easy for you to tell because if you do a search for that particular location, you're going to be able to see in that niche, you're going to be able to see what's there. And you want to pick ones, like I pick ones that are pretty easy layups, you know? Don't go, don't go into the mesothelioma if there's three people that are in the map pack that all have like mesothelioma and like the city name in their business, you know, in their business name with a ton of reviews. Like don't, don't pick that. Go pick a different city, okay? Go pick a different area or a different niche. Exactly, exactly. And a couple of other questions. I'm just going to try to address these uh, together. Uh, mm -hmm. Stephen, Chris, uh, Chris is from the UK, I believe. Uh, Stephen's from Australia. We, we love our people in Down Under um, so in the UK as well. So for those two, if you guys want to uh, put in your orders, I would say get them in to Matt because the more orders that come in for that or the more that you order, uh, the higher chance that they're going to be done uh, quicker instead of waiting around for you know a long time for orders yeah. to come in. So uh, don't be afraid if you're UK or uh, Australian. Well, we'll I, I really, we'll I'll be able to tell you the turnaround time too. Yeah, so. I really want to do some midnight oil here. Uh, that's a, that's an eighty song from uh, Australia. <laughs> I really want to do an Australian accent, but I'm doing my best not to do it. I don't want to scare anybody off here. Uh, so uh, that's that's what I would do. Is if you're UK Australian. Uh, drop that out there and uh, totally rock it out because uh, you are going to get it. You will be taken care of. Uh, he'll do a really great job for you. I know that. So now, the other the other benefit too is like you know there's just you would think like a lot of people say Matt isn't this like saturated? That's a question I get a lot. It's like isn't this saturated though? Like haven't I missed this? Absolutely not. not. It's like, so wide open. I mean I've been doing this for a little while, but like it is wide open. I mean for that HVAC site. I mean, I just made the site. Like the site isn't even indexed and launched yet. So within two months, it's got that many calls. It started from zero, okay? Nothing. I mean, and we're talking, uh, I mean, I'll, I'm not going to give the county because if you go right now and start looking at all those cities, like you're, it'll be obvious which ones are mine because I told you how to name them. But, but for those that are getting the offer, obviously I will show you the site. I'll show you all the listings so you can see what I've done. But like it's, you know, you'd think, oh my gosh, you know, like he's ranking there. I mean, you can rank pretty much anywhere with this. It's just about picking the locations right and, uh, and just getting those keywords in your, and city name into your titles uh, in order to get those snack pack rankings quick. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Um, so Lonra, Lonre, Lonry, I'm sorry, I'm slaughtering your name. I know I am. So uh, he's, he's put this question a couple of times. Okay. Uh, can I get two GMs B spots in the three pack? 
You can. Yep. But with okay. different brand, but with different, I mean, they obviously need to be named differently. Right. Okay. Um, typically, typically if they're attached to the same website, um, you know, that that's not going to happen, but I will tell you this, one of my very advanced strategies, which I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys, um, cause it answers the question perfectly is once I have a major brand, uh, brand name that's working in a particular area, I go make a second one and I do the exact same strategy with a different name. So in some of these three packs that I'm going to show you, I have all three spots with three different names. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Okay. And, so and in some cases they don't have websites because I showed you that I do the GMBs first before I do the websites. So in some cases they don't have websites. They will have websites in time, but my priority is more just getting the map packs covered. So I own the map pack before I actually have, you know, before I actually have a whole, you know, full site built out and attached. It takes a lot more time to do that. So. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So uh, here Chuck Smith asked, uh, would this work for an individual loan officer with a large service area in a big metro. Now, for that, kind of going back on what you covered before for mm -hmm. that big metro. Yeah, not a large service area. It'll work for them, but not a large service area. So They'll for, get yeah. business right where they're at, but the big service area, they're, they're not gonna get stuff outside of five miles or so. Yeah, but you're, you would say set up many GMBs for that, for a big metro, like 20 or 30 different GMBs to target all the- Yeah, I've had order. people, yeah, I've had people do, uh, um, I don't know if it's specifically mortgages, um, that, uh, that he's looking for or whatnot, but I've had people do a lot of, you know, mortgage and financial products and, um, uh, yeah, it's the exact same model. It's lots of, it's lots of GMBs hitting all of the suburbs because one with a service area is just not, um, it's not going to cut it. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. That's great. Um, let's see here. Okay. That's awesome. That's a great cover here. Uh, Mike Howard. Okay. While you were talking, this was at 842. It's almost okay. 45 minutes ago. He yeah. said, Oh snap. I'm replacing the word here. Oh snap. <laughs> I just changed the name of that DC GMB. Okay. And I now rank number two in Alexandria, Virginia. So while we were on this, he watched your webinar, made the change to nice. his GMB name. Holy smokes, Mike Howard, you are the winner of the special prize today, which I've not yet decided, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's really cool. Look Naming's at that. Naming's really important. Good work replying that, man. Awesome. Uh, Mike, awesome. Michael, Mike is uh, on board. I mean, this guy is oh. amazing uh, what he does. He's really awesome. an inspiration. So Cool. Uh, well, great. I'm so glad you just went and did that. That's amazing. That's great. It, I mean, I love it. Like it makes it, it's, I don't tell you like, see, you guys have success with this and you gals have success with this. Like that's what fills me up. It's not, I mean, like, don't be surprised if I don't get over the top excited because I see it a lot. So I'm just like, sweet, you know, cause it's kind of normal for me now seeing that stuff, but like, it is awesome. So yeah. Well, Mike went a little crazy. Uh, Mike, I think I'm gonna have to take you out since you live up the road from me. I think I'm gonna have to take you out the Krispy Kreme donuts. We're going to have to celebrate here because uh, Mike <laughs> said he's now ranking in uh, Springfield, Virginia and Waldorf, Maryland uh, in Bethesda, Maryland. <laughs> he said, okay, I'm sold. I'm sold. I'm sold. Nice. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Um, Here's a question from Phil King. Maybe I missed it, but how do we set up GMBs for customers? Are there multiple GMBs for customer variations? Okay, Phil, for that, I would say go back to the replay because we definitely covered that heavily. Uh, and uh, Matthew went over all that, which was really awesome. Um, Mike Paul said, I just – so Mike Paul, another guy. <laughs> what the heck? Mike Paul said, I just changed two GMB names. In the middle of this webinar, he said, I'm now number one for those terms. <laughs> that is crazy. I didn't even tell guys. you guys to do that. You got smart students here, man. I that love is crazy. They just, These guys are on fire. Great. These guys. Yeah, they're well, imagine you do that with like 10 or 20 and you're like, you know, you're in the snack bag for 10 or 20. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. Up to the races. Good stuff. Totally. That is really amazing. You guys are on fire tonight. That's great. Um, do you teach us how to optimize the GMBs? No, I don't believe so, right? Uh, that's I'm going to do some bonus videos for okay. you guys on how to do that. Yeah. Okay. So you'll do yep. some bonus videos yep. on that. There's a, just a few. There's not a lot that you really need to do. There's a few key things. Citations, reviews. Some, if you're going to have a site attached, there's, I have a checklist of all the on-page items that you're going to need. Um, it's not hard, but there's definitely, you know, there's some little tricks to it and some common things that, you know, you would recognize. So, okay. So, uh, Steve Richard said, uh, Mike Howard, I would ask Matthew 
If it's okay to keep changing the name of existing GMBs, Google might slap your listing if you change don't, major. Yeah, don't keep like do, don't name. keep doing it a lot. Yeah. Okay, so don't don't make it a lot. Okay, that's good. Don't thing. like keep don't 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 make it like where you just keep tweaking it, just like seeing if it's gonna do better and better and better. Like, I wonder if I add this word if that's gonna deliver better. <laughs> At some point, a guide or somebody's gonna like see that edit history and is gonna be like, okay, very good, awesome. Um, okay, Gary says. Um, well, let's see. Here. Actually, Del Del Wagner asked if if doing GMBs for auto repairs. And they also do tires and AC. Is that three GMBs for each location? Um, you'd want to look at the keywords for that, Dell. So um, I've done a lot of auto repair listings for people, um, but most people just title it auto repair. Um, give me, give me the items again. It was tire, yeah, tire yeah. repair, AC. Exactly. So if it was auto yeah. repairs and they're doing the sub niches of uh, tires, AC, that like maybe. Okay. So, um, yeah, actually, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do the sub ones because I'm thinking like, you know, auto repair, look at the suburbs that you're going to target, but chances are because Google's got this proximity thing rolling everywhere. Now you're probably going to have a lot of, even in a suburb, you're probably gonna have a lot of little auto sh you know, repair shops that are showing up in the maps, right? So your edge will be if they don't have the city name and the business name that will help you. If you put your, you know, your title, your business title has the city name and that will give you a boost. Um, like you just saw from a couple of the guys here tonight. Um, but I would say if you're seeing that there's a lot of people already with auto repair and, you know, some decent listings, when I say a decent listing, uh, to me, a decent listing is one that has, um, a website attached and has like many reviews. Those are gonna be a little tougher to beat. So, um, you know, if they don't have an, an opt, like this is not hard to beat even though they have a website and optimized, you know, reviews, it's not hard to be because their name is not optimized at all for, for, you know, what we're targeting. So I would just look at it. And again, if this is something you're not sure of when you put your, just put what you think is best on your spreadsheet and you send it in and you say, Hey Matt, what do you think of this? Should I niche it down to tires instead? Cause it's going to be the same category. So if we look at it, we go, you know what? Tires is a little bit, you know, more wide open. I think you should do tires or, you know, AC probably. Uh, and, and you'll get, you know, you'll hit the snack pack faster for that. Even though there may be less people searching for it, you're going to hit that snack pack and be top right away. So some of these are case by case basis. Um, I would say you may not need different ones depending on the area. If the area is a bit larger or more competitive. You probably will want to niche down and get those, uh, like tire AC ones, maybe instead of auto repair. Okay. That's awesome. That's every, awesome. Yeah, every market's going to be a little bit different, you know, but I would look based on what I've taught you in terms of the business name being a very important factor. Okay. For, for ranking, look at that. Look at all the suburbs. Chances are you're going to find many suburbs that are wide open. Uh, even the really good suburbs you will find are wide open for almost every, every niche. Okay, cool. Awesome. That's great. Um, so Derry asked, uh, when do we start paying? Once we, uh, pay, we get calls. So you, uh, you actually pay when he delivers them to you, Derry. So this is really awesome. You can order them now. And like in a week or so, when you get your, your GMBs, which Michael Howard, uh, by the way, he just, he just checked. I think the poor guy may be falling out of his office chair. I hope the God he's not. Uh, he said he's now number one in Capitol Hill, Washington, DC. So I would assume Michael's probably putting in a GMB order. Michael, am I correct on that? Uh, he's probably having a heyday. So on, on that end, Derry, and for everybody else has this question, you don't actually pay until they get delivered to you. So uh, just think about that. You can set up your order, and uh, Matthew and his team, they put it together, and then you don't have to pay. And uh, that <laughs> that's insanity. And for those that are asking, I'm getting some questions. And I trust I trust you. Like most people don't. Like most people don't trust me. I I trust people until they prove they, you know, can't be trusted. They can't be I trusted. Trust yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, that, so. That's really, that's really a big trust factor there. So uh, for the people asking as well, the price is $8 per GMB per month uh, with a minimum of 10 that you need to buy. So you need to And it's a, it's a 10 month term. So as soon as your 10 months is up there, then you no more payments. You're done. You can usually what most people do that I've seen is a couple months in, they've got their stuff, you know, really working. And so they go, wow, I'm already making more money from the calls than I'm paying you for the GMB. So they go grab another 10. Then they go get those ones sold and they go grab another 10. So I say about 40 some percent, I have to look at what it is now, but it's over 40% of people have come back 
and ordered more batches of GMVs. The record so far is like 10 batches because it's working for him. So, yeah, I mean, he kept expanding and expanding, expanding. So right. I did make like, a mistake. You know, at a time. Yeah. I did make a mistake here. I see Kirk and Matt uh, corrected me. I'm sorry. It was not a portion Ferris Bueller's day off. It was a Ferrari. It was oh. a Ferrari. Totally made a mistake. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's great. Um, let's see. Uh, no, no Ferraris here in Minnesota. They, uh, their roads would just tear those up. But Wow. And look at this. Dale just said, I bought GMBs for Las Vegas, and it took four months to deliver from another vendor. Yikes. Wow, that's terrible, Dale. I think I've probably put up about 30 or 40 in Vegas in the last month or so for different people. So Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. That's unfortunate. You had to wait that long. Shouldn't take that long. Yeah, that's uh, that's too much. That's crazy. Because it's it, it's about momentum. It's about momentum. The key is you want to get those calls coming in, and that fuels you. You you're excited. Then you want to spend more time on it. Then you you want to make that call to somebody and 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 collect that check. Like you are not going to do that if it's a long arduous process. It's just that's that's how we're wired. Like unless we get those little rewards and those wins, we're not going to continue. So. You know, you got to, you got to get those calls coming in. And that's why we've set this up this way. I've, I'm financing people. So that way you can scale quicker. And, uh, and I'm telling you, it's for everybody. It's for the people that are just getting started. And it's, it's for the big fish out there that are like, Matt, you know, I'm already doing mega legion. They love it because for an established business, it's all about cash flow, right? If they can pay me $8 to get a GMB working for them, that can make them more than $8 that's why they buy a thousand listings because you know yeah it's it yeah. a lot faster exactly exactly um so someone's asked this a couple of times it's popped up a couple of different people why okay. was uh why was matthew showing the zip code example mm. thanks maybe that wasn't clear so what i do with the zip code map is more so for setting your service areas inside of your GMB. I guess I forgot to touch on that. So when you get your GMB or, you know, when you get, let's say 10 GMBs delivered to you, each one can have its, each one is its own thing. So you can have a different service area and you should for each one because you don't want these unless you're doing the multiple brand strategy later on as you get more advanced. You, you want these to like, think of it almost like a franchise. This one's got a territory, this one's got a territory, and we butt, up, we butt up to each other here, but this one's this territory and this one's this territory. So I like looking at the zip code maps to kind of figure out if I'm gonna do you know, one in North Orlando, one in the East, South, and the West, which zip codes all apply to their service areas. Because you're not gonna just say that the one in the North serves all of Orlando, because it's not gonna show there anyway. Google's only gonna show it for like five miles. So I wanna just take like these excuse me, these northern zip codes and put them as a service area for the, the one that's Orlando North. The ones that are in the east area, I'm going to take, you know, these, you know, six, eight zip codes, whatever that is, and I'm going to put those in the east one. Same with the south, same with the west. I'm going to kind of carve up the city that way. That's if I'm locating them just within the actual city. If I'm doing suburbs, the same principle applies. It's just that suburbs typically will have like a zip code just for that suburb. So it's a little easier to carve that up. You don't necessarily have to say, I only serve 32754. You can just say, hey, I'm only, you know, serving, uh, you know, Winter Park or whatever that, whatever that suburb name is. So does that make sense? It's, it's, it helps you to carve up a specific city if you're going to have multiple listings within just the city itself. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Anybody that has questions on where to locate or when they're filling out their spreadsheet, if they're, you know, I've had a couple of people that have ordered that have just um, filled out their spreadsheet kind of as best as they could. And they just send it in and they're like, Hey, um, how does this look? Does this look right? Did I do this right? And then we'll check it. And then, you know, half the time they need an adjustment or two, that's fine. We'll tell them what it is and they can adjust a little bit and send it back in. So okay, yeah, here's, a, here's a, here's a really good one from Kirk. What happens when the GMB has no three pack for the location? How do you work with that? Um, look, look in advance to see if it pulls a map pack for that particular term and location. I would suggest that you focus on ones that already have a map pack there. Don't try to get Google to make a map pack where it doesn't exist because you're better off aligning with what Google is already doing. 
in what Google has already shown you works instead of trying to get a map pack to show where it's not. Okay. You might be able to make it happen by branding it to that keyword, sending citations, getting an optimized site for it as well to try and pull like a one pack or to get the map pack to show. But that's, um, but I look at that more as like a gamble. That's not a, I want certain, you know, like if it were the stock market, like I want the stock that never goes down and I want the stock that pays me every single month. I don't want the thing that's going like this. I don't have the stomach for that. Okay. Awesome. Don't try to create it. Just, you know, okay. what's already there. All right. Gator asks, uh, how do we compete with promoted listings showing up in snack pack? Uh, sorry, say that again. I had this, uh, you guys are blowing up my, blowing up my email. So that's fine. <laughs> oh, I don't. My phone keeps for, going like blinking. Say the number of opt-ins I've seen so far is uh, blowing my, uh, my glass is off my face here. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, my camera's not on, so you don't have to see the weird uh, look I have right now. So, uh, Get the glare, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so here's a question from Gainer. How do we compete with promoted listings showing up in the snack pack? So I think yeah. at the very top of the snack pack, there's promoted listings up at the top. Yep, yep. Let me show you an example of what that looks like for those of you that haven't seen that. Mm, see if I could pull a pack here that shows it. Let's just run it for, through a few markets that I've done some stuff and recently seeing if I can get one that'll pull. What he's referring to is that sometimes right here, you will see an extra map listing right below the maps that says promoted. There's really nothing that you can do about it, but, um, but it's, it's not an area for concern really. Um, most people that I see actually that are doing promoted map packs, again, it's a keyword based bid. So what are they doing? Typically they're just targeting the main keywords. Like in this case, property management, Austin, right? That would be like what they would be targeting. Austin property management, all those variations. Okay. Now watch, let's say this was you. And now you go pick a suburb. Like I say a suburb, an area outside of Austin called round rock and look at now, this, you know, this may not be a niche that you want to get in. There's some businesses in this area with it. I wouldn't go for this. This, some of these bit, 490 reviews, that's like the most reviews I think I've ever seen on a Google listing. You know, I wouldn't do that, right? Maybe this here, Brushy Creek. Maybe we should try that. And let's look up Brushy Creek. But notice that nobody there, okay, is even having keywords in their name. Now this is maybe a little bit too small. You can see it didn't even show up in the predicted results, but, it, but it's an example. You can see that nobody here has Brushy Creek in their name. And these two have property management. This one doesn't even have any reviews. Neither of them have a website. And so guess what? The person who's paying for their promoted listing, they're not in this pack. Usually they're just gonna be in the main city because their SEO or PPC manager has trained them that you know, property management, Houston gets 1600 searches a month. And so you just need to be right there. But what they've completely ignored is, you know, property management, you know, the woodlands, okay, which is an area outside of Houston. And look at that, you know, a couple people have done a very poor job of what I'm talking about. This one here, you know, has not even paid attention to their reviews. This one here has no reviews. And, but you can kind of illustrate, you know, this, this actually kind of perfectly illustrates what I'm talking about is, you know, you can get yourself into the map pack with, you know, without reviews or without even really doing great optimization because of the naming. Okay. So most people that are promoting ads are, um, are just targeting the biggest area. They're not hitting the suburbs well. And even if they are, your business name is going to more closely match the search. So you're more likely to get a click um, because, hey, you know, this looks like what I searched for. So business name is really important. Reviews are really important. And just lining up your business with the search result is really important. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Perfect. 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 All right. So let me see here. Next question is... Uh, Yeah. Okay. Diane, do you recommend Sam Twilio number is yes. I would definitely do that. Diane. Um, yeah. Twilio is what I use. Yeah. I mean, Twilio any call definitely. tracking is fine, but yeah. Yeah. So uh, Phil says, so Matthew's team will set GMB if we give them spreadsheet info. Yes. They will uh, totally rock that out. 
Yeah, I totally posted the uh, offer a couple of times, guys. Just scroll up and down if you uh, don't see it. I'm just trying to keep up with the uh, questions here. Mike Howard says, this is the best dang Webby in a long time. Thank you. Uh, he told me he was ranking somewhere else again, so uh, he totally slayed it, which was awesome. That's awesome. Um, and after 10 months, are the G e uh, Gmail accounts permanently moved to me? Yes. Yes, they are, they are Ron. So they are definitely over to you. Uh, Joe says, uh, this is the best deal and best information he's ever seen. Uh, Michael, what is the best procedure for verifying my order for GMBs? Okay, so once you guys uh, have actually paid for your order, this is when you guys email me at uh, support at bosemarketingllc.com. Uh, and I'll, ch I'll type this into the chat here in just a second. Uh, for all you guys that are my customers, you know my email by now, or at least you should. Uh, so you put in Bose Marketing at uh, support at bosemarketingllc.com. And just uh, email me uh, the receipt of, uh, of your purchase. So once you pay for it, email me your receipt and how many GMBs that you ordered, the number of pack, and I will apply the credits to your account. Now, if you don't have an account with me, what I'll do is I'll set up an account and I'll reply to your receipt email and uh, give you that wonderful access to the group. And you'll join the Facebook group as well and you'll be off to the races. So uh, just make sure on verifying the bonuses there. Don't email me right now and say, hey, I just ordered 50. Well, that's wonderful. They're, but, they're, um, they're, they're, they're ordering because like uh, some people have already filled out their spreadsheets. Several. <laughs> they have filled that's up crazy. Spreadsheets already. So their question must have been answered. That's crazy. They that's great. Yeah. They're filling spreadsheets. Yeah. I mean, I see 72 uh, submissions already on the forum today, I believe. So um, I think I've got it. I think about 72 submissions have come in. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So once you do that, just, uh, you know, put it in there, send the receipt in to me and I will get you guys squared away because, uh, this is going to be awesome for you guys. You guys are going to love this. This is such a great deal. This is such a great deal. People are uh, kind of surprised that I make the, people are kind of surprised that I make the offer. Cause they're just like, they just, number one, no one would ever like, fi like finance them on something like that. Not to mention the price, even when you factor in the payments put together is a really great price for them. But then the fact that, you know, we, we support them, we take care of them, you know, like just. Exactly. Like exactly. Yeah. So that's a, that's a killer deal. Uh, that's a super killer deal. All right. So we're getting close to the end here on this. Uh, what if your business operates statewide? Do you prepare, uh, how do you prepare the spreadsheet? Um, so what I would do for a statewide business is you're going to, you know, you want to decide how, you know, how much of the state you want to cover. If you want to cover the whole state, Let's kind of look at it as an example, maybe together here that um, that I would do. So let's just look at like the state of Florida. Okay, so let's just go to a map. And, you know, for an entire state, automatically you're going to, I mean, you'll know this because if you're in the state or involved there, then you would know. But um, right away, you're going to you're gonna tell that there's a lot of population um, anytime you see a, a large bolded city, right? So immediately that's kind of a little tip off as to like where people are at you know, like Tampa, Miami, Orlando, Jacksonville, right? There's a lot of people, but you don't have to be in the biggest cities necessarily. Um, but as you keep zooming in on the map and you see more and more cities get bolded, those are like little hot spots for you that you should pay attention to, right? And it's not so much being in each of these cities, right? As it is dominating all around that whole city. So for instance, let's say I want to dominate Tampa. You guys realize by now it's not just about Tampa. It's about everything around Tampa. So once I kind of zoom in here, right, where kind of all of Tampa starts taking up my screen, it's going to show you how you're going to want to cover this, right? So this is just another way of looking at it. But all these cities that you're seeing here that are bolded, Brandon, Wesley, Chapel, Newport, Ritchie, Tarpon Springs, Palmer, all these, right? These are all anything that you're seeing here that's bolded, like, you know, any name on the map, that's fantastic. So to, to then take it further and gobble up the whole state, um, the way I do it for the states that I'm in is I go metro by metro. So if I want to do Florida, then I'll get everything around Tampa. If I'm going to do Miami, I'm going to get everything around Miami. I'll do Orlando. I'll do Jacksonville. I'll do like Tallahassee, Panama City. Um, and, and basically just carve it, carve it up by like metro that way. Now, I do have some people that just completely go through and they'll just grab a list of like every city name, um, you know, across the whole state. Um, and you can do it that way as well. Um, so it doesn't really matter, you know, how you carve it up, but 
I per- personally just like looking at metros because usually that's where the population is and then I'll cover that whole area. It's not saying that you couldn't still get one in say Sebring here or Okeechobee or something, but um, you know, there's going to be areas in between here that the cities are going to be very, very small and it, you know, it may just not make as much sense for those to be your first listings. You may add those um, you know, in time, but um, I start with the metros and just cover those and then I would make sure I got all the metros in the state. Okay, awesome. Awesome. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, just a question off top of the head here. If they're doing statewide, how many GMBs just on it, you know, let's just say one niche, if they did HVAC or something, how many GMBs on an estimation would you think overall? You know, if you're covering a whole state and you're covering every part of the suburb, like I'm talking about, you could have a lot of GMBs. Um, I would say most people that are doing a statewide campaign with me probably end up having a good hundred GMBs in the state. Now it depends on the state. If the state is smaller, it could be less. If it's a big state, they might have a couple hundred. You have to have that many. You don't necessarily have to have that many to start, but I would say you don't want to leave gaps. Like you don't want to spread yourself over the whole state and, and leave things that are easy rankings for you. Cause you could say, you know what? Um, you know, I'm just going to go all over the whole state and then, you know, you start skipping areas that are, you know, suburbs around one of these metros that are just what I would consider to be a layup. It's like you just get a map listing there and you're in the snack pack, like eight bucks a month. Like why ignore that and try to just go everywhere else when you haven't fully covered everything that you could. So, okay. Don't spread yourself too thin. Uh, if you're saying, you know what, I really just want to do like a hundred, um, then st- you know, do the best job that you can locating that hundred really dominate, you know, a few areas, um, versus just saying, you know what, I'm just going to do five in Tampa and I'm going to do five in Orlando. It's like, you know, I would say most met, this might help most metros. I would say the sweet spot is probably somewhere between, um, 10 and 25 listings typically for, um, for a brand. Now, can you do more? You can and really drill down. But I would say just based off what people have ordered from me so far, um, most people are kind of coming in between 10 and, 10 and 25 for a particular city to really cover it well. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I uh, got a couple of questions. I'm going to kind of tie these in. Rick and Diane were kind of asking along the same type of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you ever just charge a flat fee per client, not pay per call? And if so, what range do you charge to cover calls back in the course profit? And then Rick was saying, what uh, pay per click uh, or pay per call uh, price range should we target? Okay. Yeah. Both good questions. So first question is flat fee for a client. I am not, I still have agency clients that I'm doing work for that I have bundled GMBs as part of their service. So in that sense, you could consider some of the things that I'm doing flat rate, but I had these clients in place before I did that. So I'm a big fan of the per leader per sale model because it's, it's very easy for the client to see, okay, I spend this much, I get this much result. So like when you're giving them calls like this, you, you're not dealing with like a typical like client, which is like, Hey, well, you know, how do I know this is working or show me that this is working? It's, it's indisputable that it's working because their phone is ringing. And if there's a website attached that, you know, their email or text message is getting blown up with those leads. So I do have some people that are doing it on a flat rate model and you know, the pricing is all over the place and it definitely depends my niche, but I would say, um, on the low end, people probably charging like, a th- you know, maybe like 500 or 1,000 a month. And what they're doing is they're doing like a pack of GMBs. So what you may do is you may say, you know what, Matt, I'm going to get 10 GMBs from you. So I'm paying $80 a month for those GMBs. And I'm just going to take all the calls and I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, forward them over to this, this client and I'm going to charge the client, you know, 500 right? And so you're just like, you know, you're paying me 80, but you know, they're paying you 500. Actually, there's a guy in our group, David Hunter. Um, he did this actually with an attorney. I think he got like 10 or 15 listings. And, uh, I think the guy's paying like 1500 a month. And so then he's like not monkeying with the call tracking or like really keeping track of the leads or anything. It's just, I'm basically just leasing, you know, leasing this to you. 
just giving you all these phone calls. If one month he gets a lot more, great. If one month he gets a little bit less, it just kind of evens out and then he doesn't have to deal with, you know, management or keeping track of billing or anything like that. So that's a very, it's a very good thing. I've had a few people in my group just start brand new clients that way. They seem to love it because literally they don't do anything once they've set it up. There's no <laughs> billing or tracking. So it's cool. Okay, that's awesome. Here's one for you since you have the maps up. Uh, for the city of Dallas, uh, Joe okay. Blickman is asking, uh, for the city of Dallas, how many GMBs would you recommend uh, setting up uh, to cover the entire city before the suburbs? Oh, okay. Great question. Um, I would say at minimum, you're probably going to want four. Um, it's pretty, you know, for most areas, it's pretty easy. You can, you can always do a North, East, South, and West. Dallas is a pretty big metro. Um, I don't know the population kind of within this defined area here, but um, my guess is it's pretty large. So if it's your local area and you know this well, I would say you're going to be a better, you're going to know this probably better even than I would. Uh, I would say on the low end for the orders that I've done for Dallas so far, four would be like the smallest. Um, and on the higher side, I would say about 20 within the actual like parameters here. Cause I'm recognizing these areas like Preston hollow university park. Um, hopefully I'm saying this right. Zach junction. Hopefully that's right. Um, Oak cliff, Redbird. I, we've, you know, we've done listings in all of the uptown, all of these places. So I would say at minimum, get yourself kind of the, you know, North, South, East, West, but um, if you really want to dial it in more, then I would use like the localized terms. So, you know, if you know there's a lot of people in Preston Hollow or, um, you know, Pleasant Grove, we did that too, Pleasant Grove, I recognize that one, Windwood North, yeah, I'm recognizing all these, Kessler. So I've had some people that have hit every one of these, you know, we've done maybe 20 or 30 just inside of Dallas. But I mean, these guys have done other orders and so they've seen kind of how it works. So they're, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty all in every metro they go in, they just, you know, get, get everywhere. So, you know, it's, it's whatever works for you. Some people are just going to say, Matt, I want to just, I want to just cover it and go right away. Um, then I'd say, you know, do like 20. Um, if you're, you know, a little newer to stuff, then, you know, maybe you just do, do, do the four and then hit the suburbs. There's no right or wrong. Um, it's just a matter of how fast do you want to scale? Yeah, that's amazing. And in fact, I just see uh, Tony, Tony Ramos here posted, uh, this is crazy. Uh, he said, I ordered several days ago and it's not complete yet, but received two calls today. And I checked that one of the 15 is already listed in the three pack. Yeah, Tony, that's right. Yeah, Tony, I know we have his listings going on. Um, that's awesome, Tony. I know, yeah, I think we still got a few more to make for you. So it's, you know, it's not delivered to you yet, but that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Again, <laughs> like... It, it, I kind of stopped being surprised because like it's, it's happened so many times now, but that's sweet. Yeah. You okay. Paid, so, you don't need anything yet. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta call. So that's awesome. So Ellie Shama uh, said I'm in filling out the form. We only need to provide the information highlighted, right? Correct. Yep. If that's you correct. want it at a specific address, you can specify it, but that's not required. Just give us a city, state, business name, phone category, and uh, that's it. Okay. Awesome. And uh, Scott Rogers asked about posts um, up here. He was saying, let me see if I can go up here and find uh, Scott. He's asked, he's asked a couple of questions. How do you okay. search uh, for a three-pack out of your area? Okay. That's what Scott's asking right there. Let me see the other one they put up. Okay, what's your suggestion on number of GMB posts per week? So this will sound pretty crazy, but on, on everything that I've showed you here, there's no GMB posts, zero GMB posts. Um, and I'm not saying that they don't work. I know they, I know they work. Um, but that's not something I typically invest in or start even adding until I've laid this whole foundation. But this is, to me, this is the foundation. This isn't even just, you can, you can go bigger even than this, right? Um, but this is the foundation. So a GMB post on most of my stuff, I hate to tell you, but I'm not doing GMB posts on most of my stuff. It's, I'm doing some stuff for clients, but it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty small. Most of this stuff is generating calls with zero posts. And some of you are going, oh my gosh, Matt, that's crazy. If you had posts, imagine how many calls you would get. You know? Yeah, I probably could get some more calls, but I, have, I got a lot of calls. So um, yeah, it's something you could do. But for a lot of people, it's not the place to start because it's, 
it's another moving piece and it's another thing that, you know, you've got to invest time, money, or effort into the content or the photos and video, you know, whatever you're going to do. I'm not against it, but you need to have this done as your groundwork. And if you're great with that or you've got the tools and things that you need in order to do the posts, then by all means, just go to town. Um, I've just been so immersed in this that I've not really integrated posts into, you know, into these listings. Would it dial the results up even more? I'm sure it would. I, I, I know it would. But uh, I've just been so into the listings themselves that, you know, I don't even have posts going on for, for these sites that I've showed you. Okay, awesome. And they're so getting those not good of results. So I guess we need to do some posts. Yeah, well, eventually, right? Eventually. I just, like, I don't need them right now. But I mean, like, uh, it, would, it would dial it up more, I'm sure. But um, it's kind of like once the phone starts ringing and stuff starts happening, then it's like, well, I don't really need a monkey with all this other stuff. Like, this is already working. And the clients just keep saying more, more, more. So I don't really need to do anything else. Okay, so Gary asked, uh, Gary put in, uh, Gary Drake said, you still have an address because I think I passed this a couple of times with different uh, questions. You still have an address why a newly formed GMB site uh, without a website, so a GMB uh, without a website would go to the top of the snack pack for reasonable keyword in city. Well, keep in mind, we're targeting, we're, we're lining up the business name, right, with the keyword or at least part of the keyword. And we're not, this is the key here. This will not work if you put the listing in Dallas. Like if you're just putting this right in, right, you know, I'm just going to make this listing like Dallas. That's all, that's all I'm going to target. That is not going to work because you're up against like dozens or hundreds of listings in Dallas. The way this works is locating these in little pockets that all the other people are not targeting. And that's where you get the calls. So it may seem like, why? Wow, how could just this unoptimized GMB just rock, you know, rocket up the listings? Well, it's rocketing up the listings just for a, a little subset of all the overall searches. It's not getting you number one for, you know, Dallas HVAC company, right? It might get you that for just this little sub area. And in many times when, you know, you, if you were to go look in Dallas, you're like, you're not going to even see anything. But if you're in a particular area of Dallas, now that's where you'll see it. So like I have listings that a lot of times I'll think they're like, you know, it's like, oh, maybe this listing isn't even doing anything, right? I can't really see it anywhere, but it's getting calls. So don't be surprised if you do a search and you, you know, some of your listings you'll find in the map pack and others you don't, but they still are getting calls. It's because of that proximity effect. The calls are coming from the locals, right? And it's not because you're seeing yourself number one for this monster keyword. It's because people locally are typing what they believe to be the keyword, which is like, you know, just maybe HVAC company. And because they're in right here, Redbird, you know, and you got a little listing down here, you pop up there. So now you get the service call from down there in Redbird. Yet every other SEO and everybody targeting is just wanting to rank for Dallas HVAC. And they've only got their listing, you know, like they got their one listing. So that's why you do need a lot of listings really in order to scale this up is because one listing alone or even two or five listings is not enough to get your call volume up. Because with just one listing down here in Redbird, I'm not going to be seen in the rest of the metro. Nobody's going to find me there. doesn't matter what they search. They're not going to find me. So I need a lot of listings situated around the whole area to pick up you know, pick up a call here, pick up a call there. And in total, it'll produce a lot of calls over time. But each little one is not going to make the phone ring a thousand times. Okay, it's perfect. The effect that gets you the result, not, you know, that one listing is just, you know, rocketed up for the biggest keyword. Okay, so Don, uh, Don asked in the Q&A section, uh, Matthew, for example, would you get GMBs from North Austin, South Austin, East Austin, West Austin, then mm -hmm. Round Rock, uh, Fluger, uh, Flugerville. <laughs> now we made some there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just thought I'd slayed that word there. Yeah. Flugerville. Hope uh, I got Leander, it. Leander, Kyle, etc. Um. Mm -hmm. So is that what you would do? Yeah. All those. Yeah. Okay. I've done. I've done listings in Austin, and those have all been on the list. Yep. Okay. Don also says, if the website already has city pages, can we use those city pages for the GMB URL? hundred percent. And I, I, I advise that you do that. You will get better results and faster results doing that. 
Okay, Robert Stack says, in Canada, we have postal codes. Is there a link for Canada postal code? Uh, I know in Canada, because we've done uh, quite a bit in Canada, that the postal codes are like really like, almost like hyper local. Like there's, they're, they're much smaller area than a zip code. So um, you probably, I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but I would assume um, you probably could just type, you know, Canadian postal code map um, and look at it that way, right? So just do a little bit of research and see, but you should be able to find a postal code map. You may need to zoom in, you know, and really dial it in by, see like here, I'm seeing one for Vancouver, right? So it looks to me like, you know, there's the first part, again, I, I don't know these, but off of just a cursory look, it looks to me like there's maybe like the first half of it is, um, yeah, it looks like you can probably find like the first half. And my guess is, oh yeah, like I've done a lot in Toronto area. Yeah, GTA, right? So there's like, um, yeah, it looks like you've got, you know, a few, a few letters and numbers right away. And then you've got a few after that, right? So uh, just need to look for the maps like this. I think you can kind of define it fairly well. And you can specify, some people do this on their spreadsheet. They will specify the zip code that they want the listing in or the postal, like part of the postal code where they want the listing in. And we can do that. So if you want it really like in a very specific area, um, you can, even though the zip code postal code field is not required on the sheet, you can put that in there and we will work to get it in that specific area. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Or if it's a specific address, like, you know, there's a big office building or somewhere like you specifically want to locate it. You can put that address in there and we'll get that for you. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Richard main different phone numbers for each GMB. Yes, yeah. Richard. Richard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you totally can, right? You would recommend that? Different numbers on each. Each. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, if I initially buy 10 GMBs, should I concentrate on one city or split into two cities? Keep it on one. Keep it on one, okay. Uh, Matt Tarrant says, uh, in UK, my street has 108 houses, uh, has two postal codes. That's typical, okay. Um, are you finding calls, uh, Scott Rogers says, are you finding calls are about 50% for mobile? Um, I would, I don't have the exact stats on that. I'm not sure, but I would say that a lot of them are mobile just by what clients have told me. It's mobile is just like, it keeps increasing like every year. So I don't have the stats. I don't know for sure, but I know that a lot comes from mobile. Okay. Very good. Because again, it's all proximity too, you know, so if you have your phone, it's like Google knows where you're, where you're from, so where you're at. So yeah, it's pretty easy to, uh, to locate those results. All right. One last question here from Mike Barton. Um, he said, uh, you know, what population would Matt suggest? 50,000 to 300,000? Uh, is he talking per listing or per, like per metro? Uh, that's so a good question. Is, I can kind of clarify it. So this is what I would suggest. Within any area that has 50 to 100,000 population or 50 to 300,000 population, you'll want more than one listing. So like you may be able to get into the snack pack on a 50,000 population. If it's a fairly common niche, you won't hit it probably on the 300,000 one because the 300,000 is big enough that there's probably a few sub areas or areas around that 300,000 actual city name or parts of that city that you would want to target. Okay. So, um, does that help? Yeah, I think that does. I'll, I will say this. A lot of my listings are going like my, my listings that are going to go right into the snack pack and uh, are going to start producing results. A lot of them are going to be even under 50,000 population, a real sweet, a real sweet spot. I see for a lot of my listings is probably about 30, 40,000 population. And I don't ignore stuff that's, you know, even like 10,000 population. Cause if it's, you know, the right kind of thing, the right kind of area. I, I have some people that are ordering from me and they're just, they're, they're getting stuff. They don't care if it's 5,000 or 10,000 or whatever. Uh, they will just make sure they're covering every little city name within a Metro. So that way, no matter where somebody is looking at in that area, they are, they're there. And so that's more of the effect is, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't show up on a keyword tool. It's, it's just real people searching in an area and the more listings you have, obviously the more you you've covered it. Yeah. More spread people, you know, I think as we've kind of answered more of the questions, people have gotten into uh, 
um, gotten into their spreadsheets, which is cool. And some good niches I'm seeing coming in. It's really good niches. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Sorry yeah. about that. No um, let's see here. Um, is there a discount? Okay. Tony for 50 to a hundred. Well, uh, over top of oh, oh, between 50 and a hundred. So if you pick up 50 or a hundred, Tony, uh, he's going to give you a 10% extra for free. So yeah, there is a, uh, instead of a discount better than it's better than a discount. Cause you yeah. get, you know, if you got a hundred listings, you get 10 extra listings. So if each one of those even only got one phone call a month, you got an extra 10 phone, which will do better than that. But let's just say you got an extra 10 calls a month. I mean, that's like, <laughs> that could very easily pay for all hundred of your GMBs. Exactly. And if you picked up 50, you're going to get 3,500 credits from me. If you pick up a hundred, you're going to get 5,000 credits, which means right. you'll be able to create uh, thousands of campaigns of videos for your, uh, your GMBs. So it's a good offer. Really good deals. Awesome. Great, great guys. Thank you so much for coming in here tonight. Really appreciate it. I would turn on my video, but unfortunately, I'm unable to. Um, so uh, all awesome. you see is that really goofy image of me. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I so like yeah, um, guys, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thanks for the great questions. Uh, make sure you uh, grab that link. Uh, sign up if you haven't. Save your spot. Uh, just tonight on the call, it looks like uh, almost 80 people uh, tonight joined in. So. Uh, I will be hitting the list. So if you've not put in your uh, your queue yet, if you've not submitted your for your GMBs, make sure you get in there tonight. Put in your uh, submit your information, get your campaigns in there. Campaigns. See, I'm too much in Viper here. Put in your. Uh, hey, it is a, it is a campaign because you're going to hit an area and it's going to produce calls for you, and then you know. It is. That's true. Working, that's true. One, so. That's very true. But get your uh, get your stuff in. Uh, yeah, you can submit tomorrow. Just make sure that you uh, s well. I would submit your information, Diane, but yeah, make sure that you get in your uh, spreadsheet as fast as you can because uh, this was big tonight. And I got to tell you, when I hit the list, it is going to blow up yeah. big time. Typically, yeah, like when you send a replay out for something, it's like equivalent to what already came in before that. So like exactly. however many of you are here tonight, like you probably expect that at least, you know, another amount, you know another 80, 100 people or something will, will come in and put their stuff in. Too. Exactly. So you guys definitely want to make sure you get in on this action. But thank you so much for coming in tonight. I cannot believe all of this information. I learned so much from you tonight, Matthew. Oh, thanks, Michael. Yeah, thank I, you. I think you can tell, man. I love, I love to teach. I love to help people out. This stuff is fun. I could talk about this all day. Um, and so what we'll make sure that we do is for everybody that's uh, already got their orders in that I can see submitted their spreadsheets and everybody that um, is working on them and we'll get them in. We'll make sure that we do um, some cool, just, you know, extra bonus webinars on optimizing these because there's even like, you know, like there's even a certain order to how I do a couple of the steps, you know, after you've got your GMBs, like uh, I'll give you one last little tip at everybody, but I don't bother sending the citations um, right away. I, I, I call it kind of poking the listings. I just want to see uh, which ones start getting the phone calls and make sure I have, you know, reviews on at least one review on everything, but then I'll start to add more reviews to the ones that are getting calls um, because then it will just boost those up even more. And so I, I use what's working to dictate where my efforts go. And so um, after you do that, there's a few certain things that really help to push them up. And so we'll, uh, we'll show you guys that too. And uh, just bottom line is, you know, we're going to be here to support you to make sure that you get results from this. And uh, again, you know, thank you so much for, uh, for hanging out with us here tonight. I'm Michael, thanks for the invitation. I really appreciate uh, being here and being able to share this with your group tonight. And uh, it's just uh, a real privilege. So yeah, thank, thank so you. Thank you. You did such a good job. And guys, for the replay, I will be emailing you out. So Tony, I will get the replay out uh, ASAP. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for coming in tonight. I mean, think awesome. about the opportunity here. <laughs> this is huge. This is huge. I know for myself down the road, I'll be putting in orders for Matthew a ton. Uh, I'm probably looking at, uh, you know, 10,000, maybe 20,000 GMBs. Matthew's going to cover it. Nikes. I Guys, don't, I just, let him, don't let him order that many because then he's not going to, he's not going to, he's not going to have time to do a webinar because he's just <laughs> calls all day. I, I'm already way too busy. Um, so uh, <laughs> no, but, but uh, Mitch is like, please, awesome. will you get this taken care of before you play? Well, it's actually Battlefield, Mitch. Battlefield, man. Battlefield. Yeah, so uh, the guys see me playing uh, Battlefield 5 on my Xbox. Oh, that, yeah, and they were live the other day, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, sometimes I play it live, but uh, yeah, I don't get much time away from the computer to uh, to enjoy it's myself. The same Sorry, way. It's fun. <laughs> what we're doing is fun. So you want to do it. Like what, what else are you going to do? You know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, honestly, think about the opportunity here. If you get 10 GMBs at the minimum, uh, imagine just, uh, oh, here's my thing here. Let me put in my support email real quick. But make sure that you don't email me. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, but don't email me, please, until you get your receipt. Uh, so it'll be much easier to track. Uh, because my email box, it, it just got every notification from all of you guys submitting your information. So oh. I've now got, like, uh, I looked at my support box, and I've got 93 emails in there. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. So, <laughs> so that's awesome. And uh, it's going to be great. But, yeah, just think about the opportunity here. 10 GMBs, uh, 20 GMBs. If you're Michael Howard, 10,000 GMBs, probably knowing that guy, he's, a, he's always <laughs> on fire. Um, but uh, honestly, think about the number of GMBs that you can get, how you can set this up and then really turn this into profit um, because you can really turn this around and generate great income. I'd like to have everybody think of this too as really like a stepping stone to furthering a client relationship to other things that you may already offer as well. Because when you're already bringing calls to somebody and they're loving it, the next thing they ask is, well, what else can you do, right? So now, now you're selling that website. Now you're selling those videos. Now you're selling those other rankings. Now you're selling that consulting time. Whatever it is that you offer as well, in addition to this, it's just, uh, it's just a way to give more value to them and to continue to, uh, to serve and support. So it's, um, I can tell you this, a lot of good doors will open up for you once you start bringing people calls because they just, that's what they want. It's what they really want. Exactly. That's definitely what they want. Uh, one last question, Sterling Hall, how much can we charge the customer? Uh, Sterling, I think one good way of looking this up is look up something like Home Advisor if you want to look what the cost of leads are. That will give you a really good idea. And then you could price it out. You can do rank and rent if you want or pay per lead. So you could set them up in a lead system or pay per call or whatever. That's a really good area to go to. I can tell you this too. Anybody that's already on HomeAdvisor is a good target for you to sell leads to because HomeAdvisor's leads for the most part are not exclusive. And so they got the same person calling, you know, three people, five people. And so your leads, I would suggest you make them exclusive. You can charge more money for them. And the clients are much happier too because you're selling them something that is not getting shared with a the competitor. They're the only one that's, you know, actually they're the only one that's getting this lead. And so um, at least we're able to charge a lot more money in, uh, in many cases than what home advisor is charging because our leads convert a lot better. Yeah, definitely. I could definitely see that on there. Um, and for Dale and for everybody else uh, that are asking about Video Viper, I'm actually already showed results and there's lots of people in there that are going to be sharing, but uh, jump into that Facebook group, Video Viper Facebook group. If you've bought, sorry, if you haven't bought and you're trying to knock down the door, I don't care how many times you try to blow at the big bad wolf, I'm not opening the door. So you got you to gotta either buy a, a pack here or be a Video Viper customer to jump into the group. But once you do, uh, I will show you exactly how to use uh, Video Viper for boosting those GMBs, uh, which will be awesome. really awesome. So, guys, again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This has been such a fun webinar. Thank you, Matthew, for your time tonight. Thanks, Michael. I had a blast, too. We went a couple awesome. hours. This was fun. Awesome. Perfect. From your side, since you're the host, Matthew, if you can just hit uh, um, end uh, webinar down the bottom right-hand corner, I believe, a little red. Okay. Yeah, let me pull that up. And let me just see where that's at here. Maybe it's perfect guys. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Michael. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Good night, everybody. Night.